Smart. One of the greatest traditions in all of college football, the Legacy Walk, linking the past to the present as the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats carrying a portrait of their university founder, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune. The Wildcats football team marches into Daytona Stadium for a matchup tonight against North Carolina Central as we say hello and welcome in with the former Howard University and NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green. Very simply, Jay, what's at stake tonight? Well, whoever wins this game still has an outside chance of capturing a share of the MEAC championship. Whoever loses, well, this season comes down to one game, and that's trying to play spoiler versus either Florida A&M or North Carolina a and And we will get an opportunity to see some dynamic talent on the field tonight for both sides. Absolutely. I think two of the most exciting players in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference on the offensive side of the ball. Jimmy Robinson has been the breakout performer for Bethune-Cookman as well as the whole conference. A guy that can do it all, spectacular talent and athleticism. They move him all over the field. And on the defensive side for North Carolina Central, the preseason Defensive Player of the Year, Devontae Reynolds. Quite simply, he gets it done in every aspect of the game. He's the leader of a very talented North Carolina Central Eagle defense. It's the Eagles and Wildcats in a MEAC showdown next. Welcome into ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. A somewhat rainy night here from Central Florida as Bethune Cookman University runs onto the field five and five on the season. I have two conference losses in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and they will face off against North Carolina Central. Well, tonight's MEAC showdown is one of great importance for Granville Eastman. He says, look, quite simply, we are playing for pride tonight and a chance to extend our season for the interim head coach. Yeah, anytime you're a first-year head coach and you have an opportunity to have a winning season, that means the world to him. Winning this football game goes a long way towards achieving that goal. They're at an even 500 overall on the season. On the other side, Terry Sims in his fourth season as head coach with Bethune-Cookman. He said, this is a team that grew up a lot last week in that win over Morgan State. He hopes it carries over tonight. They've been the wild card team throughout the Mid-East Athletic Conference. They can play with anybody. They've lost some tough games. They've won a couple games. This is one of those statement games you need here, taking on a team that has always played them very well in North Carolina Central. We are underway from Daytona Stadium. Demario Evans on the return, and he's brought down for a 21-yard game on that kickoff return. And a first chance for us to get a, to see this North Carolina Central offense. And something that we'll talk about all night long, Jay, is the fact that both of these teams are without their starting quarterback. Coming in is Nail Ramadan, the six-foot junior out of Charlotte. Steady guy. He's been steady his whole time there. He prepares as if he's going to be the starter every week. He's had to watch the majority of his career, but now he gets an opportunity to lead this Eagle offense in the latter half of the season. Third year. Under center, coming in as the veteran for the Eagles. The first pass completed to Nike Martin. Martin, a sophomore out of Winston-Salem. They like to call him Swoosh. Swoosh. If your name's going to be Nike, you got to go with the Swoosh. Doesn't spell it like the traditional way, but he's a playmaker. He's the guy who has really emerged in that wide receiving core for the Eagles, even though they have Deshaun Stevens, who has been their go-to guy. It's been Martin who's come along. So nine-yard pickup on that first down play. And going back to that last play, they want to pass the ball right away. I think this offense is going to be more diverse. Now that Chauncey Call was not there, Call was a great player, but he's a run-first type passer. When you get Ramadan in there, he wants to throw the ball first and then run only if he has to. The handoff to Isaiah Totten, who had 133 yards and two touchdowns in last week's win over Edward Waters, brought down by Devin James. And Isaiah Totten special. He was the MEAC freshman of the year his first season, came in and took that starting running back job. And he's a home run hitter. He's that guy that can hit you with the home run ball, 50-plus yard touchdown scampers. Very talented in his sophomore season. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. The handoff once more up the middle. Still on his feet. 
is Isaiah Totten, and Totten just so tough to bring down, Jay. I mean, he's a talented guy. He's got 5'9", 185 pounds. He can hit the home run, but he's always has that forward lean that you see in most good to great running backs. They're always going to lean forward after contact and pick up extra yards. Well, Eastman told us earlier this week he felt like his team did a really good job, especially on offense, executing. They racked up 559 total yards, 370-plus coming on the ground. That pass incomplete to E.J. Hicks. And that's the throw that you have to make when you're – quarterback coming in here they had nice protection they kept in an extra back in the backfield just to protect so the quarterback doesn't feel any pressure Ramadan has to hit that throw Ramadan was 8 for 15 with 98 yards a touchdown and an INT last week but one thing that he brings to the field is the fact that he is a good game manager now third and two and the delayed handoff once more to number 25 in white that's Isaiah top I told you he could step. <laughs> he, he's what you call a stepper. If he were Greek, he'd definitely be the guy at the front of the line <laughs> stepping. But watch this little jump cut in the hole. Jump cut gives you a leg inside. Hard cut across the grain. Forward lead picks up the first down. Nice vision on display by Isaiah Todd. And so far, North Carolina Central coming out the gate in this opening possession of the game, looking like they are in step as a team. Yeah, the offensive line is doing a good job controlling the line of scrimmage. Against his talented defensive line from Bethune Cookman. Ramadan had time, found his man Xavier McCoy, and McCoy just dropped it. Nice throw. Have to help out the backup quarterback when he's in there. McCoy ran a good route, was open, did everything but make the catch. And I still like the adjustment I'm seeing from North Carolina Central early on, willing to sacrifice route runners in the passing game to protect their quarterback. And when you've got a, a quarterback that's not as experienced, hasn't played that much, if he doesn't have to really worry about getting hit and he can just drop back and throw the ball, he becomes more effective as a passer. Well, one of the challenges this week for T.C. Taylor was really to find a way to get Ramadan as comfortable as he could back there in the pocket. The hand off to Hicks and Hicks dragging two gold jersey right, right along with him and Marquise Hendricks. One of the players in on the stop. And Hendricks is a good one. You're not going to make a living playing Bethune Cookman this way. They're too fast. There's too much speed on the field. Look how many yellow jerseys are in pursuit of this football. He was fortunate to find a crease to pick up positive yardage. But I think offensive coordinator T.C. Taylor got to look at that, realize this Bethune Cookman speed is real. I don't know how many more jet sweeps we're going to see out of this Eagle offense. We're talking about lining up against a team from Florida, very well known for their speed across the entire state as it's third and four. Ramadan quickly looking on the outside to Tyler Barnes and Barnes will pick up the first down. So a steady drive going for the Eagles. Impressive, and what are we seeing from Ramadan? Ball distribution, willing to give the football to the player whose number's being called, whether that's Barnes or McCoy, Totten, the whole group. He's gonna be a ball distributor. That's what you call a game manager. First and 10 as they're inching a little bit closer to Bethune Cookman's end zone. Five passes, three runs, make it four runs now as Totten and his escapability as he picks up good yardage on first down. Down by Tidarius Peters. And another one of those things where Bethune Cookman not willing to bring in that extra defender to defend against the run. And North Carolina Central doing a good job of exploiting just the three-man defensive line from Bethune Cookman. And I'm wondering, we don't see Marcus Ford out there. Number 48, their best defensive pass rusher. He hasn't been in the game thus far. And I wonder, is that why they're going to a three-man defensive line? And Ramadan felt the pressure a little bit, got it away. Darius Clark was in on that pressure. Elliot Miller in on the coverage. And so now they're going to come after him, try and make him feel a little bit uncomfortable. And this is one of the few times we've seen him have to get rid of the football early. They brought in Vernon Walker off the edge on the blitz from that safety position. And thus far along this drive, Jay, NCCU two for two on third downs. Ramadan dropping back and finds his man, but a penalty marker is on the field after that completion to EJ Hicks. We'll see the call. So we'll see if that will hold as a 13-yard pickup or if it will be brought back. Right. 
So offsides called on Bethune Cookman, and now North Carolina Central in the red zone, a place where they've been very successful this season. 90% of the time they've scored, Jay. They're 11th in the country in all of FCS football. They turn points. They get the points whenever they get inside that red zone. First in the MEAC. Only three times have we gotten down here and not scored all season. And play whistle dead. You can see another offsides here by Bethune Cookman. They're going to say he caused the offensive line to jump. We'll take a look at it, see if that's the case. He moves early into the neutral zone, does force the offensive line to move. Good job by the officials. So the carry from Isaiah Totten and Totten near the first down marker you only had five to gain here I'll show you how to run the football this is good running you're going to see contact waiting for Todd in the hole the linebacker is in the hole watch him just turn sideways he knows the contact's coming turn sideways gets down that's an extra three yards there Todd showing he knows how to run the ball in the tackles and avoid contact that's the mark of all great running backs so Todd has been big on this drive thus far. 13th play coming up. Impressive drive, and I will continue to feed the ball to Totten. They hand off vision. to the vision. man, and in for the score is Isaiah Totten. His sixth of the season, and what a great drive to open the game for North Carolina Central. have a quarterback that's making just his second start of the year the running game can be his best friend nice cut great vision and recognition of the running scheme to get into the end zone to cap off a very impressive North Carolina Central Drive on for the extra point and it's blocked as Bethune Cookman can pick it up and got return entourage. it and he's got room and a lot of real estate and is it number 22 Jimmy Robinson yes sir he is the special teams king. Great job of special teams by you tell that Jimmy Robinson always comes up with big plays on special teams. One of the best football players we've seen from an offensive standpoint, as we mentioned in the open. Immediately, Jay, you said he was going to have an impact, and he does right now. Yeah, great job. Comes off the edge. It's blocked. But watch what Robinson does here. He's going to not just run over there. Gather your feet, settle, scoop the ball cleanly, and make it a foot race. I really like how he slows down, get it cleanly, let your blockers get in front of you, and then it becomes a foot race. And you know, more times than not, Robinson's going to win. <laughs> Talk about that Florida speed. He is a great example of it, Jay, out of nearby Flagler County. And he can thank his man, Ty Darius Peters, for getting a hand on that block. Good job on the block. And Elliot Miller coming around to help out as well. That's a great special team. So your offense gives up six points, but your special teams get you two points back. That's the way to respond. And what does that do for your confidence if you're North Carolina Central, given the fact that you just walked down the field, you took your time, and then you have that block, and Bethune Cookman walks away with two points. Yeah, that statement was made by the central offense. Hey, they can score, they can move the ball, but how about Bethune Cookman? You give up a touchdown, now with that two point conversion or return, it's almost like all's forgotten. You're only down by four points, not down by seven. So good job of responding by Bethune Cookman after a very impressive drive by North Carolina Central to open the game. Jonathan DeLuca to kick it off to Kevon Mitchell, who is also a very dangerous return man, senior out of Miami, Florida. Picks it up, and number one is moving. Kevon Mitchell escapes the tackle and moves to the outside. 
He still won't go down. A 36-yard return for Keevon Mitchell. You saw he was elusive right there, Jay. It's senior night. Here in Daytona, and Keevon Mitchell is a senior from Miami, Florida. The senior just happened to play a little bit harder when they realized it's their last game being played at home on the stadium. Did not go down with just one or two tackles, showing him some athleticism. We'll look to see if he can have a big night offensively for the Wildcats. Well, Keevon Mitchell, one of 16 seniors honored earlier tonight, and he will be one of the featured guys in this offense for Bethune Cookman. You know what he's known for? Hey, North Carolina Central. Oh, yeah. He's the catch, that Hail Mary catch. <laughs> the Hail Mary McLeod Bethune. That's what they call it. I like that. Well done as Jabari Dunham getting the start for Bethune Cookman and already trying to escape the pocket and throws it out of bounds. And Jake, we thought we'd see David Israel, but just before the game, we learned from Coach Sims that it was Jabari Dunham getting the start. Yeah, Dunham's getting the start. Israel will play. And they're still, you know, both of these guys have been the backups to Akevius Williams, who's out for the rest of the season for the Wildcats. So we will see Israel, not unlike uh, Terry Sims or Bethune Cookman offense, to use multiple quarterbacks. He's just deciding to go with Dunham on the start for this game. So in motion, and already a flag on just the second offensive play for Bethune Cookman. He died. Five yard penalty. Well, that penalty called on their center, Eldre Barnes. That's something when we talked to the coaching staff for Bethune Cookman for years, they'd always been the most penalized team in the conference. Coach Terry Sims said, well, we've done a better job of penalties except for last week. So last week they had a number of penalties. They were hoping that wouldn't carry over into tonight's ball game. But early on, they've already had the flag thrown against them three times. So that brings up second and 15. Empty backfield for Dunham. And quickly... The jet sweep for Jimmy Robinson, number 22. We already saw the speed that he had earlier. And, and when you look at just what he's done over the season, 258 receiving yards. I like that 14.3 average. That means he's going deep. Last week, look what he did. Just over last 200. Week, over yeah. 200 yards rushing. And you see what he does with kickoff return. We saw him in the game versus Howard this year return two kickoffs. One of the best kick returners in the country. And we've already seen him score two points in this game. Here's Dunham on third and ten. And standing tall in the pocket finds Kevon Mitchell, and that extra stretch may be good enough for a first down, and it is. And this is a good job by Mitchell using his nice athleticism to hang in the air and make that catch. I told you, senior night, you always see something. There's going to be that one senior that's going to step up and play above his head. And I think for the Wildcats, they hope that can be Kevon Mitchell. Usually three times out of the year between a rivalry game, a senior night game, and a homecoming yep. game, you're going to always see those extra efforts, Jay. And Robinson out of the backfield with the handoff, and North Carolina Central was ready for it, and on the stop was Carl Isaac. And that's what you're going to have to do. You've got to get creative because they're going to know where number 22 is every time he breaks the huddle. And we talked to Granville Eastman, the head coach for Central, as well as the defensive coordinator, and he said that's the guy. You have to know where he is. If you take him as just a slot receiver, he's going to burn you. And if you treat him like just a normal running back, he'll hurt you as well. So we're going to see what they do schematically to try and free up Jimmy Robinson. Jimmy Robinson was the MEAC Offensive Player of the Week coming off that terrific game against Edward <laughs> Waters. And there, some extra tough yards as Devontae Reynolds stopped him. Robinson's a good one. And you saw that able to run in between the tackles, although he's just 5'8", 160 pounds, but you have to keep in mind, this is the conference of Tariq Cohen. And Tariq Cohen dominated this conference for four years at North Carolina a and And since that time, I see every coaching staff tries to find that Tariq Cohen type back. And Jimmy Robinson may be one of the closest things we've seen since Cohen left the MIAC. The handoff once more. And the question is, He's short. can a player like Jimmy Robinson grow into that Tariq Cohen? Because... If you remember, Tariq Cohen could, could take a pounding. He could run it up the middle as well as bounce it outside. He was durable, stronger than you would think. Low to the ground, low center gravity. And what I've learned about small guys, they've been small their whole life. 
So they're not, it doesn't matter how much bigger the guys are. They've learned how to avoid big guys throughout their football playing career. Now I want to see what they do here. Fourth and one. I don't necessarily want to get the ball to a 160 pound running back. I'd like to see him keep it with the six foot three, 200 pound quarterback, maybe a quarterback draw. Dunham keeps it himself, but he is met promptly in the backfield by Brandon Bailey. Two yard loss, and that North Carolina Central defense was ready. They lead the MIAC in tackles for loss, and they stop the Wildcats cold in their tracks. They offer start now. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's and in part by ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. That's what it looked like earlier today for the world's most famous beach, Daytona Beach, as our time lapse. But now back here at Daytona Stadium, a little light rain continuing to hover over tonight's game. Isaiah Totten on the carry, pushed out by Marquise Hendricks, the transfer out of Boise State. Don't do that. I'm just telling you, you're not going to make a living running outside the tackles versus Bethune Cook. They fly around to the football. Now, you can use their speed against them by some misdirection. But if you just think you're going to outrun this Wildcat defense to the perimeter, it's going to be a long night. So quickly, second and 11 after that one-yard loss. And Ramadan back at it. And the play is whistled dead. Number 72, five-yard penalty, second down. So Jalen Barrington called for that, but it looked like everyone was kind of moving, Jay. <laughs> well, they all started to lean, and maybe a slight pause from the center delivering the ball on the snap count. First penalty of the night for the Eagles. Backs him up now, second and 16. They elect to hand it off, and Totten trying to get back those yards, and he picks up just about half of them. Isaiah Totten having a great night thus far. I mean, Totten can really run and take a look at the vision here. He accelerates, bounces off contact. That spin move able to pick up two to three more yards after contact. And Totten, who had 37 yards and six rushes on that first drive, capped off by a touchdown, is already close to 50 tonight. Forty-six yard line, the line to gain. Quickly getting it away. And Ramadan finds Totten. And a nice little hit afterward from the Wildcats, number 42, Trenton Bridges. Trenton Bridges Sr., yeah. linebacker. They're gonna bring a little extra thump tonight. And great recognition by Bridges on that screen set up to the outside. And I just still don't think you run side to side versus Bethune Cookman. Well, this time that Wildcat defense was ready for whatever North Carolina Central brought their way. So back to punt is DeLuca. Gets it away. Kevon Mitchell picks it up from just about the 15 yard line. Gets out to the 25, nine yard return. And we'll come back to Daytona Beach We'll see the Wildcats get moving. Saturday on ABC, this one's got college football playoff implications written all over it. It's the ACC battle between number two Clemson and number 17 Boston College, that's in Chestnut Hill, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, and live on the ESPN app so you can watch it anywhere. I want to talk about that game. What about those Cubcats? <laughs> oh, cute looking group of young cheerleaders there. Start them early you down here. You got to start them early for sure. 
The Cub Cat. Never heard of a Cub Cat. Cub before. Cat's That's a cute name. I bet it is. All cute and cuddly, and then they grow up to be wild, <laughs> wild cats. cats. <laughs> a little more dangerous then, huh? <laughs> So Bethune Cookman backs up five yards, starts on the 20, and another penalty flag comes out. And could this one be against Bethune Cookman once more? Out for a false start. The motion by the offense was legal. <laughs> so the flag waved off. So they picked it up and said <laughs> the, the motion by the offense was legal. Okay. So here we go again. First and 15. And Dunham heaves it out to Jonathan Thomas. And Thomas moved backwards. And both teams are, this is a physical game. You know, right now, both teams are adding a little extra thump to it. I think they realize what we discussed in the open, the fact that whoever loses this game, then you're you're basically playing for pride the rest of the year. If you win, you have an outside chance of getting a share of a conference championship. And we're seeing some intensity down on the field early. Second and seven. And the rollout to Stefan Francois. Jay, you mentioned just about, you know, perhaps grabbing a share of the MEAC title. Well, if you look over the last several years, let's go back to 2010, it's been really these two teams that have controlled it quite a bit, and it was last year where Bethune-Cookman halted North Carolina Central's fourth straight share or claiming of that MEAC championship. You know, on that Hail Mary pass, and the season was basically over after that, and the next week Central went out and got beat pretty good by an a squad that they had won the previous three matchups against, so shaping up to be that same type of scenario this year for the team that wins this game. Dunham staying in the pocket and dangerous throw, but Francois able to mix it out of the air as Anthony Sherrill had really good coverage on him. It was Francois who wanted it more. Yeah, and Francois is telling everybody he thinks he made that catch. Be curious to see. There was a lot of contact. They ruled it incomplete. Good job of coming forward because he had possession of it. No. No. And if so, he's, he's already out of bounds. So fourth and six, and Giovanni Francis back to punt. And another stoppage. Stoppage. <laughs> That's the best way to say it is. We've heard a lot of whistles tonight, Jay. They're going to review that pass. I'm just saying they're doing a review. So in live action, I thought he may have brought it down. When we go back and look at it, Jay, I don't know if he had possession all the way down. He was bobbling it before maybe he brought it in. And I think the look we saw, it appeared that even when he got possession, like his waist was clearly out of bounds. But take a look at it and see what the replay officials decide. And something unique to MEAC football as well, SWAC, for all their televised games, they use instant replay. Not every FCS conference around the country does that. I think it's a good use of technology. If we're going to be here at the game, we can have assist. Let's take a look. Anyone doesn't have it. Yeah, it looks yeah. like if he does come down with it, he's already, he's already out of bounds. Out of bounds. Yeah, so that was a quick one. Yep, call confirmed on the field that it's an incomplete pass, says Jason, Jason Soisman is our referee for tonight. Terry Sims knows his team has a lot to play for tonight, as well as North Carolina Central. And another whistle before the start of the play. Well, well, Coach Sims, you were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was hoping that last week's penalty fest would not continue this week and so far in the first quarter four penalties on Bethune-Cookman 
and continuing just to move the wrong way. Ironically, Jay, all those four penalties have been false starts tonight on the Wildcats. Francis gets the punt away. And EJ Hicks trying to run east and west. Very dangerous. He was out near the 40, and he comes looping around. And a penalty marker was thrown on the field, and I think that's a Did pretty easy call, call Jay. Yeah, he was hesitant to call it, the, the block in the back, but... They tried to set him up pretty good. Marcus Martin from North Carolina Central. And I think what you have to do if you're the defender in that situation or the blocker, realize you have leverage on them. Just hold your ground. Don't go for the big hit. I think you just go and get in position. See right there, they set him down. He should have just gone to the right a little bit. They had him in a broke-down position. He could have just used his body as a shield, almost like you're playing basketball, trying to box out on a replay. So we'll step aside quickly from Daytona Stadium. It's 6-2 Eagles. Built by the Home Depot. Very interesting. Final two weekends remaining in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Florida A&M and North Carolina A&T only with one loss. Rattlers control their own destiny if they can pick up a win against Bethune Cookman. But first things first, it's the Wildcats and Central who are trying to get a slim chance of getting that a share of that MEAC title. Because these two teams we're watching on the field play the top two teams in the conference. Mm -hmm. A&T's going to play Central and Bethune Cookman's going to play Florida A&M. Well, when you saw those standings, the one thing you got to note Florida a and beat North Carolina A&T head-to-head -head this year. But this could get I – mean, there are a couple scenarios in which you could have like four or five teams end up with two losses in conference yeah. and four and two winning. You've got the different tie-break scenarios. So this, this could get interesting. And we talked with both of the coaches this week about just what it would mean, you know, to, to be in position if they can win out of perhaps claiming – a piece of that MIAC title. Means a lot. And, and looking at those standings, got to say this, Tiff. So let's suppose Florida A&M loses, North Carolina A&T loses, Howard wins out. Those two teams, those three teams have two losses. The Bison beat FAMU, didn't play North Carolina A&T. So it's going to be interesting isn't, how isn't it, it all plays I, out. I also find it really interesting, Jay, how you just eased Howard in this conversation. They, they earned it. They're yeah, sitting there okay. in second place in the conference. <laughs> so. Here we go again. America, do you hear this? <laughs> Jay Walker. Oh, Dangerous wow. passing. What a catch. And way to bring it in on the outside. Looked like it was going to go past Nike Martin. Instead, he was able to one-handed and bring it in. If this, if this ball's thrown chest high, that's an interception. But great recognition. But because the ball was thrown poorly too high, that allowed the receiver, Martin, to come down, make a catch, and pick up a couple yards. You see exactly why he's leading the team in receptions. Now with 28 as we're nearing the end of the first quarter. And thus far... It's been an interesting game thus far. North Carolina Central got on the board first. But Bethune Cookman standing right with them. Come back to Daytona Beach. <laughs> they are providing the soundtrack for everybody in the stadium and of course up here in the booth we cannot keep still as we're back to play on the field on the carry is Taekwon Watson from nearby Tallahassee Florida just up in the band area. I mean one of the best venues to watch a band Bethune Cookman band 350 plus members and next week's game next week when they play Florida a and I've said it before, it is the loudest game in America. <laughs> the two biggest bands you're going to see, two of the best bands you'll see. 
They go at it. Hey, the White Hats, I've been a long-time fan of the White Hats. That's what I call them. They're really good. You got a little taste of it during that commercial break. Sorry, y'all missed it at home. Yeah, I can agree. Now, fourth and three. Big decision here as the Eagles decide to go for it. And I believe they may have picked up enough yardage for the first down. We'll see where they spot the ball. Well, they're giving them the first down. And one good thing for North Carolina Central, they have controlled the line of scrimmage running the football. Totten's had some impact in this game running it. And here they go with the quarterback keeper. One I thought they should have a little bit earlier, give the ball to him, keep running forward with the offensive line doing a good job. And the man down on the field is Andrew Dale. So we will step aside quickly as the trainers tend to Dale. That go to your head, Gary. What's in your wallet? The injured player for North Carolina Central, their left guard, Andrew Dale, who's actually missed the last three weeks because of an ankle injury. It's good to see him at least standing up, not putting a lot of pressure on his leg. But we saw a couple of his teammates run over to perhaps try to help him over, but they ran back to the sideline. Jay, need some more reinforcement, you think? Yeah, more reinforcement. I think they don't want him to put any pressure on his ankle, so they're going to call for a cart from the sideline. And as you mentioned earlier, He's been out for the past three weeks with an ankle injury. And when you go out there and play on a joint that's already a little bit tender, got rolled up on in that case, and it probably be the end of the evening for Andrew Dale, unfortunately. For Redshirt sophomore out of Moorhead City, North Carolina. Yeah, you'll see. Take a look at him right here. We're talking about the lower extremity. As you see, he slide and... Just tries to plant on it. Gets rolled up on. That's and his football. And I'm always surprised you don't see more injuries like that mm -hmm. on running plays. I tell everybody, those little boring run plays you see on TV, first down, running back picks up two to three yards, there were some collisions between some grown men with big bodies. <laughs> and there's no such thing as an easy play in the game of football. And at this point in the season, Jay, with, you know, two weekends left for both of these teams, you can ill afford injury as you know that there's still something to play for. And this Eagles offensive line has really shown improvement over the year. They played well, particularly tonight. And as we saw the standings, I mean, all those teams have a chance of possibly getting a share of the title of coming in second place in the championship race. And this is normally the time where you're a little bit banged up, but you expect to be playing your best football. Just a reminder, folks, you can stream college football all season long on ESPN+. Plus. So start your free trial today by, down by downloading the ESPN app or visiting ESPNplus.com. I'll tell you, Jay, when we have an opportunity to go to some of the other cities and can't, you know, tune in to the game, it's always great to have that. ESPN, ESPN Plus. Plus app because that's how I follow the Bison. Yeah. That's how you follow the Rattlers. The Rattlers. Right. <laughs> they had the golf cart in there. He probably would have done a wheelie if you put him on the back of the golf cart. So they had to go out and get the flatbed for the big old lineman. Let's hope that he's okay, but he seems to be in some pain. But good to see this crowd here. Give him a round of applause as they that scored him off the field. And a lot of guys, as we were talking about, Jay, have been banged up for both teams. When you look at North Carolina Central, their starting quarterback, Chauncey Caldwell, with a lower leg injury a couple weeks ago against Delaware State. A couple of guys in Sonny Richardson and Jamal Curry Elliott also down for the year as well. So coming in place on that offensive line is number 71, Jay. The big boy, Malik Reynolds, 6'5", 360 pounds. You'll be able to see him on your TV. Nayo Ramadan going over the top. And with good position was Martin. You saw the speed and athleticism there. Just couldn't get to it in time. Overthrown. A little bit inside out fade route. Got caught too far on the inside. Couldn't get back outside to the quarterback's location target. But how about this? 
Six five, three sixty. Yeah. I'm thinking he's like three seventy now. Mm-hmm. That's a big boy there. That is. And they've been controlling the line of scrimmage, so I will continue to run the football. A little misdirection there as Totten gets the handoff and some tough yards. And now whistle blown as Trevor Merritt tries to wrap him up. See, when you got a big guy, you just got to get him moving. <laughs> right? So once you get him moving, he can do some damage. So you're going to see Riddick Reynolds. He's responsible for what you call a wash block. He's got to wash his guy down. So his job is to go from here over here. Take that guy across the formation. Once he gets the motor going, vroom, 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 okay, that's the cutback lane for Todd. I like the sound effects, Jay. You got to really crank well that diesel. Done. You got to get that diesel warmed up now. You can't just go from zero to fourth gear. You got to. They taught you a lot at Howard, man. America's University. <laughs> Ninth play of the drive here, third and five. And it's Totten who has been busy all night. Bought down by Kennedy and Duke Way, and that's another first down for this Eagles offense. And, and Totten makes it look easy. I mean, even when they do a good job schematically of stopping the run, he's got the ability to make you miss in the great vision and the timing to find just a small crease and pick up positive yards. Remember, he had a buck 33 and two touchdowns in last week's game against Edward Waters. And now, really what North Carolina Central has been able to do thus far is control the tempo of this game. Eight first downs already for this offensive unit. Impressive drive to start the game, and now it seems like they're starting to get back to what they did in that opening drive. And Ramadan has been a fairly good game manager, almost in the reach of Isaiah Totten. Good thought process there from the OCTC Taylor. Oh, it was there. I mean, schematically, they had what they wanted, just running the seam route up the middle. The linebacker had his back turned. You'll see Totten get behind the linebacker. That's all you want him to do. Put a little bit more air on that throw, and that's a touchdown. Ramadan, who we mentioned, stepping in for the injured Chauncey Caldwell. Now 7 of 12 tonight for 44 yards. But he looks like he is in complete control of this offense. Now second and 10. And, Jake, what I like about this is that they're not trying to do anything too sophisticated. The run has worked all night long, and they continue to feed Isaiah Totten. Then don't get away from that, because even when they stuff the run, he's still picking up positive yards. And, and one thing you're going to know about Granville Eastman, the head coach, he's a defensive coordinator. So most, more than not, most head coaches that have a defensive background, they're going to have a running attack. They're going to make you run the football because they know what it does to a defense. And I think we're now starting to see Coach Eastman's personality on his influence on this Eagle team. Third in the Miak in rush yards for Totten going up and couldn't bring it in was Tyler Barnes as he was backtracking towards the end zone. Tyler Barnes, the six foot four inch freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, thought he got away with a push to get some separation. But if you're going to get away with the push, you have to make that catch. That's a nice throw on Powell. That's the push there. He got the separation. Uh, you got to hold on to that, son. Just a freshman, so I'll give you a pass. But the rest of your career, that's the catch that your quarterback needs you to make. Jonathan DeLuca out of. Boone High School in Orlando on to attempt the 37-yard field goal. It's got the leg, and it's through. So North Carolina Central adds to its lead. They're up by a touchdown. I, I love USA so much because they've been 100% dependable. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the U.S. Army. Find out at GoArmy.com slash Warriors. Some of the brave men and women from around the world sporting their school colors as this is the week we all honor America's heroes who served and currently serving in our nation's armed forces. We salute you and your families. Veterans Day will be observed on Monday and was in Bristol for a college basketball seminar and we had Lieutenant General Daryl A. Williams come speak to us, Jay, and one of the things he said was 
yes, it's great to thank us for our service, but you also have to thank the ex our extension and our family because they are the ones who have to endure those long stretches of their loved ones not being home and have to perhaps get that call to know what's going on with their family. So thank you to our armed forces and their families. Well, they always say uh, freedom's not free. That's right. It comes at a cost and it's cost from sacrifice and with the family and everybody involved. So salute to all of our troops. Well, Jay, we'll have another chance to see this the Phil Cookman offense thus far not done a whole lot tonight. Only 10 plays tonight, and when you look at how much they've picked up, 32 yards in total. Yeah, at home. They're <laughs> doing this at home. And one of the things I'm curious about is how much longer do you go with Dunham? Do you bring in David Israel, who... You know, we thought was going to get the start tonight. You go with Dunham a little bit different. That spark hasn't been there. And I just wonder what Coach Sims will do as this game progresses. This will be the biggest play tonight for Bethune-Cookman. It would be a face mask call. So the face mask called on Randy Anyanwu. Uh, number four, you'll see him, the defensive lineman, takes him down face mask first. So that moves the ball out to the 35-yard line for the Wildcats in the backfield, number 34, and Isaac Washington, who is the rushing leader for this group. High snap. And Washington gets it straight up the middle. Powerful yards up ahead, brought down by Patrick Connor. Washington's a guy, they say he's a hard hat guy. Every play wants to bring it. You saw him there at the high snap, was running, averaging over four and a half yards per carry. Just a freshman, so that future is bright for him down here in Daytona. A good sign for Bethune Cookman, their longest play from scrimmage tonight. Oh. Dunham in the shotgun once more and a high snap from Eldre Barnes and Dunham just throws it out of bounds. And see, I put that on the quarterback a little bit because the previous play the snap was high, but Dunham made a play. He did not talk to him in between to tell him, hey, you're missing your target with that snap. What happens on the next play? He misses even further. As a quarterback, you have to go and let him know, yes, we picked up the first down on the previous play, but that snap was way off target. Now we'll see. If Eldre Barnes can correct it. And in motion. And Dunham takes the snap, hands it oh. off, and oh my, he keeps it himself. Oh, fumble. And fumble on the field. North Carolina Central just swarmed to the football. Anyanwu was in on that stop. We'll see who comes up with it. I thought I saw Central recover that fumble down on the ground, and they just collapsed the pocket, met at the meeting point in the backfield. Central saying they have it, and they do. Miles Terman on that fumble recovery. Now, just watch on Wanyu just collapse number four gets there in a hurry they meet at the exchange point between the quarterback and he knocks it out there that's a great play by Randy I want you give you credit you got caught for the 15 minute 15 yard face mask how'd he get off the coach's bad side <laughs> create a turnover plus six in turnover margin that's third best in the MEAC the second forced fumble for Anyanwu well, this is a very opportunistic North Carolina Central defense that's best in the conference in tackles for loss. We've seen a couple of them here tonight. And those same old boring plays can lead to big ones. The big playability of Isaiah Totten, 37 yards for the score. 
I told you you can hit home runs. Doesn't just have to be in this ballpark and dorm. You know, good home run hitter hits it out throughout the whole major league. And good job by Todd showing you so far tonight he's been the best football player on the field. Well, he has come in with a mindset to get it done. He says, give me the load, I'll carry it. Yeah, good job. And the great vision, the way to set up the block and get out there. And a good runner is going to capitalize and finish off a great run. So Lippy on to attempt the extra point. Off the goalpost. Oh, banked it in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to call those, Jay. <laughs> Man, it doesn't matter. There's no style points on extra points as long as you get it done. But what a great job here by my big fella, Malik Riddick. Watch him get in the way, seal the edge. All 360 pounds plus. Springs a running back and Todd takes it to the easy. what it takes find out at goarmy.com slash warriors friday on espn it's the seventh annual armed forces classic honoring america's heroes arkansas takes on texas at forkless military base in el paso 7 p.m eastern like everything else you can catch it on the espn app and how about the Sound Machine, NCCU's marching band, The Sound Machine, made the trip all the way from Durham. That's better than eight hours on the bus, Jay, to be here in Daytona Beach and battle off against the marching Wildcats. And Coach Eastman said it was a boost. He didn't know they were coming down. And then when he saw him, he was excited. He was hoping his team would get a spark by having the band come down. Hats off to athletic director Ingrid McCree for making that happen. You don't have to do it. You're not obligated to do it. But coming down here on the road, it's the... I believe it's the 80th anniversary of their band and they're doing it in style coming down here to the sunshine state and dangerous because the man who lights it up on the field Look is out. jimmy robinson this jimmy take it jimmy house how about a century mark for that kickoff return for a touchdown what can he do player get the scout report he can return kicks. He can score. Nice burst. We saw him do it earlier this year. But he's got a full head of steam. He gets from 0 to 60, and the dog don't hurt. And once he gets there and squares up the kicker, so I'm singing at that point. It's just like they're striking up the Marching Wildcat band. He finishes it. And we got a glance of what he could do at the Circle City Classic in Indianapolis. Came in for the injured Quayshawn Bird. Yeah, the team was getting ready to start getting beat bad by the Howard Bison. And what happened? Jimmy Robinson started to make an impact on this program with not one, but two kickoff returns in the Circle City Classic, a game which ultimately Bethune-Cookman lost. But we asked Coach Sims about it. He said, that's when I knew I had a special player. He's that impact player. And ever since then, They've been figuring out ways to get him more involved in the offense. Yeah, he had 202 return yards against Howard in that game to go along with a couple of touchdowns. And last week, the MEAC Offensive Player of the Week with 208 yards. He just has a knack for that 200 mark, don't you think, Jack? <laughs> well, he's worth 22. Yeah. So he likes those twos. Reminds me of a guy that I used to play with, David Palmer. Mm. We're 22 and a shifty like that in the return game could play wide receiver, running back, slot. I mean, Pop even thought he could play quarterback. So whistle slows things up. We had a flag. It was Bethune Cookman who moved back five yards for this point after attempt. Uriel Hernandez. Hernandez is the fullback kicker for years. <laughs> He's just a senior. He's been a good kicker. They always give him credit. We always like that little fun. 5-4, 220. I heard he was a star when they went to Lincoln, Nebraska to take on the Huskers. <laughs> he took on the punting duties as well. Got a lot of pub and TV and radio press. And Hernandez That's is big. blocked. So we've seen special teams play come up in a major way for both sides. 
But now the Wildcats have cut the lead in half. They cut it in half, but that was big. Because if he converts on that extra point, then with the touchdown and extra point, they tie the game. Now they're in that trail position down by a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And that may be just low trajectory. It seems as if Darius Royster, number 43, was able just to jump and get a hand on it. Not supposed to be able to block an extra point that low trajectory. And I think Hernandez just missed. It. 10 05 remaining in this one. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, if you're just tuning in. And we've watched North Carolina Central march down the field on their offensive possessions. Isaiah Totten with two touchdowns tonight, but Jimmy Robinson runs back a blocked PAT and then a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. And the Stars are coming out to play, and those are the guys we thought could be the best football players on the field. And we're seeing them make an impact in this football contest. And over the last three years, this matchup has been incredibly intriguing given the fact that these games have come down to the wire. Demario Evans on the return. I'm gonna tell you, the officials are going to need to get control of this game because if they allow these kids to keep mouthing back and forth, it's getting chippy down there. I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing a couple of penalty flags come out for unsportsmanlike conduct. So Terry Sims is just reminding this officiating crew perhaps of what you were just saying, Jay. Five years an assistant before he took over as head coach of this program. And you've got to keep watch of number 25, Isaiah Totten, already <laughs> 103 yards and add to that. You, you know it's nice. You're a good runner when you feel it. He sees it. I talk about his vision. Watch him recognize where the pressure's coming from on his right. Before he takes the handoff, he sees him coming up. Ah, number five thinks he's going to get a clean shot on him. He saw him in the corner of his eyes. Quick cut. Pick up five yards on the play that should have been a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Ramadan just throws that one low. And Totten was the intended target. And that, that's one... As a coordinator, you say you got to make that throw because you had your best playmaker, Todd, in the open field. Would have been a tough tackle one-on-one -on -one for anybody, and that could have been a big play. And really, this Bethune-Cookman defense has seen a steady dose of Isaiah Totten, nearly seven and a half yards per carry, and we're not even through two quarters of play. Ramadan calls his own number, tucks it and runs, and tough yardage up ahead, and Ramadan coming through with the first down. Yeah, no chance of Caldwell, no worries, but Kevin Thompson, number 91 for Bethune-Cookman, had an opportunity to blow up that play, but he missed a would-be tackle on the quarterback. Keeps this drive going, and the Eagles have been very good on third downs, and a couple yards picked up here on first down. Yeah, they've been dominating on third downs. Four of seven on third down. That's very impressive. And so Totten gets a breather well deserved, but I don't know if this defense is getting a break because my Sean Powell had 100 yards last week as well. Another dangerous running back, the freshman with the handoff. He's got a first down, but a penalty flag, and that one will probably come back. Only a holding when a running back is able to bounce outside like that. So Malik Rennick Riddles, Reynolds, who came in for Andrew Dale, went down earlier, called for the hold. That backs the Eagles up. But in talking with Coach Eastman this week, what he said was, we've got to treat this game like a playoff. You've got to keep that mindset, build off of last week, 
and come in ready to hit them hard. And they've done that thus far, Jay. They have come in here on the road in a tough place to play it. They've been very competitive. Ramadan airing it out across the middle of fight for the ball. And Nike Martin and Deron Maxwell both trying to take possession of it. What a great job of coming back for the football by Nike Martin. This is how you play the wide receiver position, boys and girls. Ball's underthrown. He gets behind about three yards, comes back to it. The Deron Maxwell thought he was going for an interception. Instead, long first down completion for the Eagles. 34 yards on the pickup. And quite honestly, Jay, they said we weren't expecting him to be the guy. I mean, he, he's been a playmaker. They expected Deshaun Stevens, the transfer from North Carolina State, to be their impact guy. And Stevens has been good, but Nike Martin has been the guy from the wide receiver court for North Carolina Central. And you got to watch every play. After every play, I'm seeing some chopping. They're, they're talking. They're chirping back and forth with each other. And this game has the potential to get out of hand quickly. Powell with a cutback. Powell also with good vision, and he's knocked down Bumble. quickly, and the ball is out. And Bethune Cookman on the recovery. Didarius Peters comes up with it. Or was it Devin James on that recovery? Uh, this is a hard hit. It was a great run by Powell but not able to finish off the run. Helmet on the football by Elliott Miller from the cornerback position. And that ball comes out in a recovery and a big play by the Wildcat defense. Uh-oh, I always say, when you start hearing the band chanting in the background and they're getting into it, bad things are starting to happen for the opposing team. 18th takeaway on the season. And that is their fight song. We'll hear it all night long. <laughs> and perhaps Look, they that do will it carry onto the field. <laughs> That's what I like. They can kick the chant going without the music, the instruments being played. Jay, just pick up your jaw. Okay, we, we know you are very impressed with this marching Wildcat band. I'm I mean, Tiffany, I'm, I'm surprised. For good reason. You, I'm surprised you would, yeah, you would, you would say that. We're, we're, in the, <laughs> we're in the sports journalism business, and I think I get called, I get paid to call like I see it. And what I see <laughs> is Bethune Cookman always having one of the best bands in the country. They've been number one, I think, for the past three or four years. They have certainly risen into prominence. Everyone knows him. Jimmy Robinson, everyone knows him as well. He has continued to make a name for himself this season. He, he's explosive. And it's been fun watching he and Totten show their football skill tonight. You just have the feeling if they get the ball to Robinson in open space, he's going to make something big happen. And now we're seeing David Israel, who we expected to start tonight, get in on this series. He carries the ball for a short game. Transfer out of West Virginia came over from a Juco won a national championship. So he's a guy who is very much used to a winning program and with Akebius Williams out for the season went down against a and and opened things up for Israel And we knew that the offense hadn't been producing for Bethune Cookman. So coach Sims got the short switch pulled the trigger and that, That's that's football 101. It's third and three. You have to make that pass. You have to make that pass. They ran a five-yard out route. The receiver was open. In college football, that's an easy first down. That should be like stealing. They gave you the look you wanted, and your quarterback didn't deliver, and that may be because he's a little bit rusty coming into the football game for the first time. Just one of four tonight on third downs for the Wildcats. Francis on the punt, making E.J. Hicks continue to backtrack. And come back to see if North Carolina Central can have some more juice from the backfield.
Delightful. Now that's smart. Kick off your week 10 NFL Sunday with ESPN at 10 a.m. Eastern. Sam and the guys will have all the early breaking stories, injury updates, and preview each game right up to kickoff. And like everything else, it's live on the ESPN app. And the marching Wildcats and the sound machine both getting ready for a halftime showdown here from Daytona Stadium. Isaiah Totten has been the man tonight for North Carolina Central. The Eagles running back over 100 yards, responsible for 14 of their 16 points tonight, two touchdown runs. They played a good first half, and you want to finish off the first half well. Some challenging field position, their worst field position to start this game, but you want to make sure you pick up a couple first downs and at the minimum go into halftime up by eight. We've already seen a couple of 13 play drives from the Eagles offense. We'll see what they have dialed up as on the outside quickly there is Ty Darius Peters in on the tackle. And that's just that part that just doesn't seem to have much success against Bethune Cookman. I mean, bubble screens and things like that nature, where they can use their natural team speed to make plays. They do a great job on it. So. I'm still a little bit surprised that we're seeing offensive coordinator T.C. Taylor continue to try those plays unless he's trying to set up something to use their speed against them, fake the bubble screen, then maybe go over the top. And we saw them go over the top earlier and just miss on a couple of throws, and Nike Martin goes to the sideline. He looks to be a little banged up. We'll keep an eye on that now. Third and six, under five to go here in the first half of this MEAC showdown on Thursday night. Ramadan looking for his man. Looked like he pushed off. And the pass is incomplete. And if Ramadan could just get a little bit more on this throw, it would have been another big completion on third down for the Eagles. But the pressure by number 42, Trenton Bridges, forced him to hurry up the throw and forces North Carolina Central to a punt. Beware of Kevon Mitchell, the senior, on senior night, deep to return. Squib kick, and Mitchell just watches it roll all the way down to just about the 24-yard line. So a chance to see David Israel and the Wildcats once more in this offense, the sophomore, as we mentioned, who transferred from West Virginia. And, and he's a guy, he, he can do it. He's got the ability to run more so than Dunham brought to the table. And this Bethune-Cookman offense with their offensive coordinator, former Wildcat legend Alan Suber, they really like to do a lot of run-pass options. So when you've got Israel in there, I think you'll start to see a little bit more of that zone read RPO run game in the backfield. And Israel really wants to block out what happened last week against Morgan State in that win just 0 for 4 and Kevon Mitchell can't hang on to it. It was an offense that really couldn't get the ball moving and the quarterback position only completed four passes, Jay. Yeah, and they still are able to, you know, move the ball because they're physical like that and they want to run. But yeah, that's something where Williams was the guy. The Kevon Williams was the guy and this offense went as Williams went. But when he goes down, they're looking for somebody to step up. And you see the numbers there, three touchdowns, seven interceptions. You have to have better ball security. Tupac Ismi in the backfield. Israel instead play action, nicely drawn up. And Stephon Francois with a big game to just about the 45-yard line. So now they're in Eagle territory. And we talked about they want to do that run-pass option when they've got Israel in the game. And You'll see him behind line of scrimmage carry this thing out to the very last minute and able to make a nice read and a big play for the Wildcats. And now getting some juice and steam is Tupac Ismi. He picks up the first down to Quill Taylor on the tackle. Maybe Israel's providing that spark. We're starting to see some signs of life, not only from the offense, but from the crowd here after consecutive first downs. 
moving quickly. The Wildcats keep going. Pump fake, and he's got him on the outside. Kevon Mitchell. Threw it out of bounds. Wow. What just a missed chance there from Israel. Uh, I see why Israel has the seven interceptions. He's not afraid to throw that ball downfield. I mean, he had a wide open wide receiver in the flat, and a little bit better throw here. And that would have been a big completion, not quite a touchdown, but just missed. The thing I like about Israel, he's got a quick release and a live arm. Good things happening for the Wildcats, their longest drive of the game. And quickly to Jonathan Thomas, and Thomas with the yards after contact in the red zone. You can sense that spark come in when Israel started getting things going, and now the Wildcats are driving once again, just pulling it out, that run pass option. Recognizes the outside linebacker vacated for run coverage and hits him for a big play. 25 yards on that completion, and now Ismi, they're punishing back. Up ahead for a couple. Brought down by Devontae Reynolds. And one of the nice plays from Reynolds coming from that wheel linebacker spot. And you'll see they're selling out against the run. North Carolina Central, everybody close to the line of scrimmage. And Bethune Cookman in the chess match are going to try and spread it out to try and create some running lanes. Second and goal is Israel to Francois. And Francois continuing to battle. There's that chippiness you talked about, Jay. <laughs> you can hear it on the microphone. Every play, there's always a skirmish going on somewhere on the football field. And if you're Bethune Cookman, this is your first trip to the red zone of the night. Of course, you'd settle for three, but you really want seven to come within an earshot of the Eagles. They get man-to-man -man coverage from North Carolina Central across the board. Plenty of people in the box for run support. Israel hesitated, and Thomas won't go down, but a ton of white jerseys to halt his progress. Yep. Well, this is what you hear. Field goal, field goal. And once they don't even come close to picking up positive yards, easy choice for Coach Sims to make. Take the points. Uriel Hernandez, who was first team all MIAC a season ago, will have a 22 yard chip shot here. The snap. And blocked. <laughs> Another block tonight, Jay. And it's getting chippy on the field. What are we talking about? Every play, there's always a skirmish going on. Officials having to break up another near fight. And second time tonight, Hernandez has had the defense get a hand on the ball. Let's see if this ball's got better trajectory in that one. Nothing you can do about that one. And Jamarcus Johnson in on that stop. Or was it Daryl Smith, the senior, number 21? So, Jay, let's take a look at your power rankings because as, as this drive comes up, it's one of the things that, you know, we will have conversation about in the second half, just about where you see things, and we'll get that up just after this. As Dominique Schaffner in at quarterback, and Schaffner just has just about all 22 guys on the field, probably 20 right there, coming in to stop him and help push him. And North Carolina Central has all three timeouts remaining. So does Bethune Cookman. Remember, the Wildcats won the toss. They will get the ball to start the second half. I, mean, I think Central's pretty content to go into the locker room up by eight. If they can pick up a first down, they'll go for it. If not, they'll take their lead and go with it. Now you make a decision. If you get the first down, if you're going to call the timeout, you do it now. I'm sure Bethune-Cookman is not going to. 
And instead, it looks like the clock will just wind down. Good look there at Kevin Richardson. One of the wild, Kevin Thompson, excuse me, one of the leaders for the Wildcats. It's been a physical first half, and you said both teams are chippy. And by them being so chippy, it's going to make for a very entertaining and emotional second half. It's been a good one. Isaiah Totten has pretty much been running all over the field. So has Jimmy Robinson. He's been electrifying as well. Eagles up by eight at the half. a shout out from the marching wildcats they spell out espnu on the field getting a lot of groupie love as we say hello and welcome back jay walker tiffany green and it's time for give me five well, well not so fast since i'm giving away postseason honors the give me five topic well i got to pay homage oh to the boy. number one band in the mid-eastern athletic conference but as we do that let's get to give me five wildcat style how about this the story of the year in the Mid-East Athletic Conference, obviously Florida AM. The Wildcat Willinium fans don't started love that. right there, but I call it like I see it, Tiff, and they've got an opportunity to do something that people didn't expect. Make it to the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. Number four. How about the breakout play of the year? Do I know how to pick him or what? You do. Jimmy Robinson from Bethune Cookman University. He's been the breakout star in this conference. We saw it on display here tonight. He can flat out get it done. Look out for him for years to come in the MEAC. Three, the coach of the year. Let's go back down to Tallahassee. Give credit where credit is due. Willie Simmons sparked that Rattler program and willed them to a successful season that not too many people saw coming. He's my coach of the year in the MEAC. Number two, let's go to defense. And how about this? I really like seeing Daryl Johnson play. He's an NFL prospect, just a junior. I think he's been the premier playmaker defensively in this conference. And number one, we got to go to offense. Now let's take it up to Washington, D.C. Kalen Newton, the offensive player of the year. He has a fantastic year. He gets it done, and he's a fantastic playmaker. He's unique. And I think the story of the year has got to be the game of the year, which was North Carolina A&T. A lot of MEAC pride when they went on the road and upset East Carolina. And you see Matt McCain with that 108-yard return. The Aggies were a force to be reckoned with. Jay, I just got to know, do they pay you to make sure you reference Howard at least one or two times a game? Do they pay you for mentioning Florida a <laughs> so, uh, But I, I think the key is that I call like I see it. Kalen Newton, would you say he's the offensive player of the year? Yeah, he's a dynamic okay. player as the second half is underway from Daytona Stadium. Jimmy Robinson with the ball in his hands. Always dangerous when he touches it. Taking a look at the first half stats, and it was really North Carolina Central who controlled the ground game, picked up 150 yards rushing, 228 total. Also, both teams with turnovers in that first half. Yeah, and Bethune picked up most of their passing yards at the very end of the first half, and it did not equate to points. So the offense has been pretty dry, but I will say that when they went to the quarterback change with the original starter they were going to have, David Israel, we started seeing signs of life from that offense. In, in, in typical, in typical but doing cooking fashion, Israel showed he was hot. They're going to start the second half with Jabari Dunham at quarterback. I just... That's why we call the game, Jay, and we're not coaches. I got it, but... I mean, who did you see gave them a spark? Their yeah. best chance at scoring seemed like it was David Israel. He was going downfield with the football. Once you decide to play him, you want to see if he can keep that hot hand going into the second half. They're going back with Dunham, and Dunham didn't even get him in the scoring position. Yeah, to your point, Jay, David Israel was four for seven with 58 yards late in that second quarter. The completion out to Tupac Ismi out of the backfield. Brandon Bailey in on the stop. And, uh, and all I'd say about that is when you start seeing that happen, you just wonder something's not clicking between quarterback, offensive coordinator, head coach. I don't know, but he's supposed to be the starter. He's not starting. He comes in, gives you a spark, and now he's not starting to get in the second half. And remember, 
their number one guy in Akivas Williams is out for the season. And there's Kevon Mitchell across the middle on the slant. And he's brought down short of the sticks. You, you got to read your progression. So this is a little drag route they've got coming underneath. North Carolina Central had this thing sniffed out from the beginning. I want you to take a look at this linebacker right here. Anything that comes across the middle, what's he going to do? He's going to jump it. Yeah. So what happens? Oh, you're going across the middle. I'm here right away. Play's over. What are you looking at? That's your key's a quarterback. Sometimes the game's not that hard. Let's <laughs> just throw it where they ain't. But the idea, too, Jay, is that even though he's had a lot of time in this system, he understands the offense, a fifth-year senior, one of the 16 tonight being honored, if you're not playing consistently, sometimes it may be a little bit more difficult to recognize those things. Oh, absolutely, but that's film study, and that's getting the priest that read. Well, we'll see Isaiah Todd, number 25, out of the backfield for North Carolina Central. He put on the clinic in the first half. He can step. He showed you the great vision, the ability to finish off the drives with touchdown runs, getting into the end zone, and then getting around the edge, setting up his blockers, and then when he became showing off the speed, he was able to do that as well. Isaiah Todd, one of my favorite runners in the conference, and he put it on full display in the first half. Buck 21 <laughs> in the first half. He could be heading for a 200-yard rushing game the way that offensive line was blocking in the first half. I think he may have put the Wildcats defense on notice. Let's see how they play him in this second half. Well, picking up right where he left off through the first two quarters. Let me teach that. Say, calm down. You know why I say calm down? Patience, my friend. This is one of the most patient runs you're going to see. Watch number 51, Leverett, come around from this position from the tackle. It's a tackle pulling. Well, you got to set it up. So watch this patient. Take your time, take your time. Hit it! Patience, my friend. He busts through the hole, but he also was running behind Leverett, who's a two-time all Act selection and the captain of this team, leading the force up front for this O-line. Leverett, one of those good stories where he's already graduated and still going to play another year of football next season, possibly. Picked up his criminal justice degree and Totten, one of the rare times he was forced backward. Marquise Hendrick coming through. He loves to hit, Jake. Oh, Hendrick's the guy. That's what he said. Hey, run and hit. Likes to run and hit. That's what the trait of a good linebacker. We saw Dominique Schaffner at the end of the first half, and now we're seeing him once more, the redshirt freshman out of North Carolina, actually celebrating his 19th birthday today. Maybe give himself a little birthday present by <laughs> throwing a touchdown pass. Well, the referee has had difficulty all night with that mic pack. So, basically, false start, moves North Carolina Central back. Fourth penalty of the night for the Eagles. Well, Nayil Ramadan started this game, Jay. Now we're seeing Shotgun. And another flag. Same thing at left guard. Yeah, and what you're, what you're getting now is the different quarterback. You're hearing a different voice in the back. You see, right there. Right there, that little flinch right there. Hard to hide. Those big bodies down there. Dante King, 300 pound guard. He flinched, everybody's gonna know it. But that's what happened. You're bringing the backup quarterback, different voice cadence, something you're not used to hearing. Schaffner attempting the pass and just bobbled by Deshaun Stevens and then a very dangerous hit afterward as Vernon Walker caught him off guard. Yeah, this is the ball here that should have been caught. Slightly been thrown behind, but he was throwing to throw him to slow him down in the zone. And you mentioned Vernon Walker, solid hit. This is a game of football. This is all shoulder. Yeah, I don't think he lowers the helmet. That's just a solid hit for a quarterback making a poor decision where to go with the football. So now third 
and long for the Eagles. Schaffner just tucks it and runs. Trent Bridges on the stop. And that will bring on the punting unit. Trent Bridges there, number 42, the fifth year senior from D Land, Florida. Right up the road. Yep. Playing in his final game here as a Wildcat. Having a pretty good night so far. D Land, the Bulldogs, a very good high school team in the Central Florida area. Here's Kevon Mitchell, and Mitchell was tripped up. Big stop there for the Eagles. Come back to see the Wildcats on offense. Make it with you. College football presented by McDonald's. A lot on the line if you're just tuning in as both North Carolina Central and Bethune Cookman trying to stay in the hunt. They've got an outside chance of grabbing a share of the MEAC title back here in Daytona Stadium. Jimmy Robinson, who is the big time playmaker, he's already lit up the field tonight with a kickoff return for a touchdown. And he's a guy who came on because of an injury to Quayshawn Bird in week four of the season. And since then, they have found all kinds of ways to get him involved as much as possible. Yeah, and he and Bird are the same type player, played on the same high school team. And one goes down, the other one stepped up. And just imagine what it's gonna be like next year. And there's Jimmy Robinson Woo! on the outside, running by defenders, Painter. I think there's a little Daytona International Speedway action with Jimmy Robinson, Robinson every time he gets the ball. He's got the Jets. They're using him in the backfield. He's a wide receiver. He's responsible for Bethune-Cookman offense tonight. Every point has been because of Jimmy Robinson right here. Gets in daylight. And what's a great runner going to make you do when you miss a tackle? Going to finish you off. You're going to pay for it to the house. My breakout Mia player of the year is Jimmy Robinson. And he has not disappointed tonight, Jay. You said he goes zero to 100 real quick. 56 yards, that boy good. Saturday on ABC, this one's got college football playoff implications. It's the ACC battle between Trevor Lawrence and number two Clemson taking on 17th ranked Boston College and Chestnut Hill, 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC, also live on the ESPN app. And just a note, the Tigers have won the last seven against the Eagles. The last win for Boston College coming back in 2010. Yeah, but going to Chestnut, not easy. No. They always, one thing BC is always going to do, they're going to be physical, bring the defense. That's a high power Clemson team that they'll be facing. Could be a trap game for the Tigers. Mario Evans from just about the eight yard line. He's got some space. And down at the 30 yard line by Alfred Adams. Jay, I want to go back to one of your impact players for the game. You mentioned he was the breakout player of the year in your mind, but Jimmy Robinson is like the dude, okay? He's accounted for five of Bethune Cookman's last six touchdowns. You know, Drake said it, that's all me. That's Stay all true, him. that's all me. <laughs> that is all him in, in this game. Every point scored by Bethune Cookman has come by the way of Jimmy Robinson, so he's been that dude for them tonight. Does he have any more tricks up his sleeve? Meanwhile, Isaiah Totten slammed to the turf by Kevin Thompson. Well, he knows how to blow up a backfield for sure. And yeah, the senior from Baltimore, Maryland, gets in the backfield. This is what I like. When, when you're a defensive lineman, you get your hands on those running backs, 
you got to make the tackle hurt a little bit. Make it a hard tackle. Todd's been dicing him up pretty good tonight. When Thompson got his hands on him, he was trying to send a message with that tackle. So now second and ten and another series in which we're seeing Isaiah Totten continue to run all over the field tonight. Kevin Thompson once again in on the stop. Yeah, and Thompson starting to show that motor, that energy there. That last play there, he got penetration into the backfield and then chased down Isaiah Totten from behind. Watch number 91 on the right side. Watch him knife underneath. Get the penetration, force him to dice out, and then still make the tackle from behind. And that's when you talk about defensive linemen having a motor. That's what defensive line and coaches like to see. High energy, high motor guys. And he's having to hold up that D-line with Marcus Ford out with an illness. Ramadan back in the game and just a tough throw, incomplete. That brings up fourth down. And you're going to see more of that look. That, they finally brought pressure on Ramadan. And he got rid of the ball too soon. He could have held on to that, had a wide open receiver. He saw the blitz coming, got a little antsy. And when that happens, you're going to see it again in another situation in this game. Ramadan, who started the game 7 of 10, has gone pretty cold 2 of 8 since then. Shank. Wow, he shanked that. And very good field position for Bethune Cookman. We talked about the speed of Jimmy Robinson. It's been on full display tonight. Uh, the kickoff return, he showed he was the fastest guy on the field. And then the ability to cut back and get the 50 plus yard rush touchdown for the scamper. He's been on display. And we also did show his scoop and score on the blocked PAT, which he took to the house for two points. Jimmy Robinson, you want to know just how fast he is? The coaches clock him at a 4-3-40, straight up. I believe. And like I said, it doesn't take him long to get moving fast in a hurry. Well, they've really utilized him out of the backfield much more in the last three games as Robinson on the carry and back to David Israel at quarterback. You said it, Jay. He was the one who had some of that momentum going into the locker room. Yeah, he had the spark, and he, he wasn't afraid to call his own number, pulling the trigger, throwing the ball downfield, put a lot of stress on this North Carolina defensive secondary. He was really a wild card coming into the season with the quarterbacks just because it was a transfer. They didn't know necessarily Ooh, what he was going to get. And a tackle for a loss. How about a sack from Devontae Reynolds, the VAC preseason defensive player of the year, and your impact player, Jay. So here's what happens here. They're showing you everything says there's nobody deeper than this line. This is Reynolds here. This is another outside blitz. They're not going to let you get outside the pocket. What do you do in that situation? You just simply hand the ball off to the running back going straight ahead. The moment you try and pull it, they got you. You're in trouble. Tackle for a loss. They baited them in. And, and those are the little things where it doesn't show up in the stat sheet, but your offensive coordinator knows you didn't see that blitz. You should have given them the football. Instead, it's a loss of yards. Injured Wildcat on the field. Cedric Jackson down. We'll step aside quickly. Powered by Instacart. Thanks, bro. You got ripples. That's everyday easy. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. The redshirt freshman, Cedric Jackson, being 10 to 2 on the sideline. They've already been down one. And taking them down is that defense. And Brandon Bailey, excuse me, Jarrett McCarter on the sack. So quickly out of the break, that's a six yard loss that brings on the punt unit. Good job. They're trying to do a quarterback sweep here. Not going to do a good job of getting blocks on the outside leverage. Tupac gives me has to do a better job. He gets beat on the inside. And that allows the quarterback to get hit. Giovanni <laughs> Francis, one of the seniors. For the Wildcats, 
Shank. I don't know. Another what is shank going on punt. This is here in night for the punters, Jay. <laughs> Well, we talked about the power rankings. We teased it a little bit yeah. earlier. Now let's take a look at hey, it. Hey, welcome Bowie State, led by their quarterback, Amir Hall, who has a chance to be the Black College Player of the Year. They're going to the CIAA championship game. They're my number five team. Number four, Southern University. Are they good? Are they bad? Don't know. They're pretty good, but they're four. Number three, a and T, little surpriser. Yeah, but I'm sticking them in number three. Number two, I think you give fam you credit because they beat A and T. But the number one team to me, after I've seen it all, the most steady team. How about I keep you on hold and make you watch after this oh, play? Oh, and ah. you know what? If you're going where I think you're going, I just threw up in my mouth, Jay. The number one team this year, from what I've seen, is Alcorn oh, State. Okay, all right. <laughs> Alcorn State's been good. They had the mishap for their homecoming when they lost to Alabama State by a field goal after five overtimes. That was just a miss up. Alabama and M much improved. I like what Connell Maynard's doing there. They've got an offense now. That's a team on the rise, but. Hats off to Alcorn. Took me a while, but I'm going with the cone. Well, that's fair. So, so I mean, projecting, I mean, they've got a chance to make it to the SWAG championship and perhaps be the representative for the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Who are you expecting to see as a penalty marker comes out on the field? Uh, Alcorn and I think Southern, but if <laughs> something about Southern trying to beat Grambling with something on the line. I, I just think Grambling's waiting for them. They got nothing really to play for but to knock out Southern, and they can possibly still make it to the SWAC championship. Illegal formation, offense, five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty, three play second down. Jay, what I love about it, though, is that all of these rivalry games at the end of they the regular season are meaning something. <laughs> they mean something. And, and, and going back to my power rankings, we know that FAMU just lost last week. So I knocked them off from being number one. You say, well, how did they just drop from one to two? I'm like, because I still give credit because fam, you went to A&T and beat a and I'm a big fan of head-to-head -head matchups count. So how can I rank you higher than another team when the records are similar and they beat you at your house? Now, do I think a and is a better football team? Yeah. <laughs> but I give credit for Florida a and m They're ranked in the FCS top 25. They have an opportunity to either go to the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl if things shake out in their favor or perhaps the FCS playoffs. And, and it'll be interesting. I think if a t goes to the playoffs, the MEAC's drought will end. MEAC hasn't won a playoff game in probably over 10 years. a and going to go to the playoffs and beat somebody if, if they make it. Central now with third and 15. And a timeout taken by the Eagles going back to those FCS rankings we talked about North Carolina Central the Aggies showing a little representation but also they are all chasing North Dakota State let's the just Bison. be clear yeah the Bison are there Kennesaw State who we covered on a Thursday night game running the option one of the best teams there Eastern Washington Gabe Grubar their quarterback getting it done and Elon representing the CAA but then you go down, James Madison's a little bit low, but there goes A&T sitting right there, 13 now. Keep in mind, the FCS playoffs is 24 teams. Eight teams get a bye, so you have 16 teams that play that first round. A&T's in position to get one of those. The question becomes, will fam, you get one if they don't go to the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl, and I don't know if they make it. Yeah, what, what makes a compelling argument for a and is the fact that they had those huge wins over Jacksonville State and East Carolina. As Ramadan finds his man, it looks like a penalty marker on the field and probably pass interference as Tyler Barnes was able to bring it in. Yeah, I think they're probably going to get Elliott Miller for either holding or pass interference. Pass interference. Defense number seven, 15 yards from the previous spot. So no catch there, but the penalty will move the chains. And Elliot Miller is a guy who really brings experience on the back end for the Wildcats. And you see, not able to hold on for the catch. But they move the chains for the pass interference. Miller's a guy with experience, most experienced guy in that secondary four. Bethune Cookman. And he's a guy that's really been picked on a lot the last couple of games. 
as Totten, who has been somewhat quieted here in this second half, if you will, after running for 121 yards in that first half. He hasn't had many carries, but you're starting to see, he's starting to feel a little bit. So I continue to feed him. He picks up four yards on first down, give it back to him on second. He's wrapped up quickly by Totney Evans and company. So that brings up another quick third down. The third five is manageable. They tried to run it. So in where they are on the field, this is possibly still four down territory. So if you pick up positive yards, You'd like to think you're going to go for it on fourth down if you don't get the first down on this play. Ramadan trying to bounce it to the outside and likely a hold, and that's coming back. Joseph Johnson in on the stop. We'll get the call here. Holding. Offense, number 71. 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. Malik Riddick Reynolds has been flagged for a couple of plays. But remember, he's the backup left guard. Yeah, and, and you see Reynolds coming around the formation. And makes the block, and then they've got him with a tug of the jersey. And that's one where you just scratch your head. You don't need to. The play is going outside. You have the initial thud. Release. Let him go. He was not going to make that tackle. Ramadan steps back and just overthrows his in re intended receiver, Tyler Barnes, who's been targeted quite a bit tonight. And, and when you're throwing the ball deep downfield to a six foot four inch wide receiver, Give him a chance to make a play. Don't throw it out of bounds. Put some air on it so he can adjust. That's that 50-50 jump ball they were trying to get. They had the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside, but Ramadan just threw it too far out of bounds and didn't allow Barnes to make a play on the ball. The punt to Kevon Mitchell. And a favorable bounce for the Eagles. Well, just before the game kicked off, we got some good eating Robert Jones on the grill, holding down the tailgate. And that's a BCU legend in the old ball coach, Cy McLaren. Uh, Cy McLaren, over 65 years, 67 to be exact, affiliated with this institution. Coached the football team, everything else. And it was good to get schooled by him. And so the HBCU game was built on the backs of legends and you see what he did there, coached the base, the basketball, the football team and the basketball team. And was an NFL player as well. So it was a pleasure to chop it up and I had fun watching him school you. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're taking you around the block a few times. So those are the folks whose shoulders we stand on. Uh, most definitely 87 years young and still making his way out to football games to support Bethune-Cookman, his alma mater. Yeah, that, that's what he does, and I mean, he's a guy. He's, he's one of the legends here. In terms of what he was able to accomplish and meant so much to this small school down in Daytona Beach, Florida, and has seen the growth and emergence. That, rip, that food was pretty good, too. Oh, oh we enjoyed it mightily. Uh, anytime that we can get some chicken and steak off the grill, little baked beans as well, can't go wrong. To Pac Ismi with some tough yards ahead. Darius Royster in on the stop. Interesting story about Darius Royster. Originally came in as a linebacker, but the coaches asked him to put on some weight, move to that defensive line position, and now he's a starter at DN. Walk on. Came to the program as a walk on and worked himself into the starting lineup. And it's really been a merry-go-round up front for the Eagles with Kawan Cox out this game. Now Israel scrambling, and he's got room. Israel 
Tries to shake a man. Anthony Sherrill trips him up. 14-yard game. Quick decision. And this is what I really like about Israel. He's going to go back, feel the pressure, get out of there. You're backed up in your own five-yard line. Pick up what you can pick up. And he's able to pick up a valuable first down for the Wildcats. Look at that song. <laughs> Good things will be happen when the band starts playing. A moving song there, but a bad snap. Ismi able to catch it and try to do a little something with it, but very tough there. A loss of one. And that's another one of those cases where the center snap has not been accurate from Eldre Barnes, and he's got to get that under control or else that's going to come back to hurt him. Now's the time I think we've got a little room. I think you go for that double move with David Israel. You get yourself a pump and go, see if he can stretch this team. Instead, hands it off to Ismi. And Ismi trying to go the opposite way. Jerome Foster with the tackle. Now they went with the sprint draw and they gave it to Ismi. If you're going to call that play, I want you to give it to Jim Robinson. Sprint draw with Robinson with that much open field that it creates on the backside could be something. Very name of the play in sprint yeah <laughs> certainly jimmy robinson has used this like a track tonight yeah. and this is the key part of the game third and short why isn't jimmy robinson on the field you, you put your best playmakers on the field so they can make plays in these type situations they snap it just before the end of the quarter and israel running into several white jerseys all runs this drive and that brings us to the end of three. One point separates these two. The future of awesome. Jay, the ESPNU spelled out by the Marching Wildcats. That was dope. Good punt there from Giovanni Francis, sending EJ Hicks back to near the 20 yard line. And Francis getting to the outside, excuse me, Hicks. A 51 yard punt from Giovanni Francis, 22 yards on the return. By Hicks. And a crucial drive here for North Carolina Central to start this fourth quarter. I and mean, I think you've outplayed them on the field, but it's a one point ball game. Your special teams have let you down. You've got to pull away. You've got a Wildcat offense that's struggling. When your offense has the ball, get the ball in good field position, you have to increase that lead to put Bethune Cookman in a stress mode situation on offense. And one good indicator of that, Jay, is looking at first downs. Just two. This half, they picked up a dozen in those first two quarters as a strong run from Isaiah Totten on first down to get this drive going. Yeah, this is old school. They're just going to hand him the ball off and say, pick a hole. So as, as you'll see on the handoff replay, he's not looking for to hit a hole, but watch this. They're just going to hand it to him. You pick a hole. Where do you see it? Oh, okay, I'm going to the left. He's got great vision. And you can only do that if you got a back that you trust to make the right decision with the football. Totten, 26 carries tonight, 161 yards and two scores. They feed him again. Plows ahead for a few. Starting to get chippy again down there on the field. You're starting to hear more talk. Officials having to come in and give credit to the officiating crew led by Jason Soisman. They've done a good job of not allowing this game to get too out of hand. But I think you're starting to get in that danger zone right now. And really, really credit this Bethune-Cookman defense because we saw a couple of you know, 13 play drives from North Carolina Central, including the one to start the game. And since then, they haven't been able to extend drives as a penalty markers on the field. A great job by the defensive coordinator, Yogi Jones. He made some corrections after that first drive. And done a pretty good job slowing down this offense.
We'll wait to get the call here. Offense number 84, 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. Zach Kellum, the guilty party. You see Kellum right there at the top of your screen left. Gets him around the neck. Good call by the official. Now second and 17, just across the 50-yard line. Totten bounces on the outside, tries to cut back once again. Some more laundry comes out. Vernon Walker in on the stop. So back-to-back -back holding calls moving the Eagles in the wrong direction. And that's on Ricky Lee, the true freshman, playing for North Carolina Central, but he's from Jacksonville, Florida. Able to pluck a Florida boy. Now second in forever. Ramadan quickly out to Totten, get him in space and try to make something happen. Instead, he's dragged down by Tiberius Peters. And Peters lucky he wasn't called for a horse collar tackle. Wasn't an orthodox way which he brought him down. In that situation, not much you can do. He's got him there, oh, he had a little face mask and then he leaves his feet. Anytime you grab somebody above the shoulders, ah, that should have been horse collar. Third and 23, they'd have to get to the 42-yard line of Bethune-Cookman, just holding and holding Tyler Barnes across midfield, but back to the original line of scrimmage. Devin James with the tackle. And that's a good job. They picked up some of it. And when you got a one-point ball game in the fourth quarter, it's starting to become a battle of field position. Now let's see if North Carolina Central can pin Bethune-Cookman inside their own 10-yard line after this punt. Jonathan DeLuca receives it. Kind of a line drive to Kevon Mitchell and it takes the Eagles bounce and he does his job. So Bethune Cookman will start for deep in their own territory here with 11.25 remaining. Back here at Daytona Stadium, a one point game between North Carolina Central and Bethune Cookman. The Wildcats have the ball deep in their own territory. They'll try to get out quickly and they complete a pass to Francois and Stephon Francois moving them out as we say hello and welcome in because this guy is a very familiar face around daytona beach and nick collins a super bowl champion a MEAC hall of famer what's up man what's up how y'all doing great glad to have you here now you Thanks. were here to honor your father you're he's honored every year and willie collins talk about how special that is for you yeah, it's special for me and my family um it's a way for us to stay in touch with the, with the college the university and um just a good way to just you know, show our kids we all are about giving back as well. And that's what I say. You got to mention the give back. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. you give back to Bethune Cookman University, which is what we all should do as all right. the models from these schools right here. Absolutely. Who taught you that? What makes you give back? I, I was brought up that way. You know, it's my upbringing. Uh, my grand, my my grandparents was the one showed me the way. You know, they had a church. Then from there, all the things they used to do for the church and for people, um, it was just 
glad just for it was it was just an honor for me to just witness that and so I just carried that on. Now one thing I have to say, this is my man here now. You know we go deep, right? Yeah, yeah we go so, deep. Same, so, so, real deep. same class so, together. So, so, so I became yeah. official earlier. They gave me an yes. official white hat from the band. Right. So I got one of those. I don't know if you got one, but you could get one. But we are <laughs> members of the 2018 Hall of Fame. Well, you go buy one though. You give me another check. No, no, I'm, you know, you know, I'm, I'm gonna just ask uh, Lynn Thompson. You know, he'll, he'll get, get it for me. What, what was it like for you to, uh, that Hall of Fame weekend? We went to the Hall of Fame up, up there in Norfolk. Man, it was one of the most uh, gratifying feelings that I had in a long time you know it was it was a, a, a dream come true just to be honored by by uh the MEAC and uh just the class we had just knowing way how everybody was brought up and how they got there it was uh pretty amazing now, now you know what i say about that too he's lucky i called his games and i didn't play because he wouldn't have made it to the man hall you go. Uh, uh, we you now, go. That, that, that jay already know what i had about two or three picks you know he was just, he was just throwing that ball up there and i was gonna go Hey, just because you pick off them guys doesn't mean you to pick me off. But hey, Jay, that team y'all had. Only thing I can say, up. you know, you were kind of swift with the hips a little bit. You know, get out of. Only thing, you know, you probably got a couple first downs. I got you right now. This is a, <laughs> on a couple, but hey, this is the defensive struggle going on right here. Absolutely. Hey, and this has been an old-fashioned game. And what are you thinking right here when you're the safety coming up to make this tackle? What's your mindset? Uh, I think that guy did a great job forcing back to his help. Uh, forcing him back to the inside. That's where you help. You want to take away our angle so he don't have the opportunity to get outside of there because if you get outside, there's no one out there. And that's something I've always wondered, like from a secondary position, because you play right when that bubble screen started becoming a mainstay in offense. Absolutely. What were they teaching you all? Do you run through the wide receiver trying to block you? Do you go after the ball? What do you do? Well, uh, they taught us to pick a side. Okay. And the side was the outside leverage, stay outside leverage and force everything back to the inside to your help. Um, if you give up the outside leverage, now they got more field to work and you know, you're going to give up a first down. Oh, as you can see, play. they are reviewing the play on the field, whether mm -hmm. it was a fumble or not. And, and so, Nick, what does it mean to you? Second round draft pick. You played with the Green Bay Packers. You won a Super Bowl. What does that mean to represent the MEAC and HBCU football in the NFL? It, it just goes to show um, that you can make it anywhere. Um, if you put your hard work and dedication and your mindset to go out there and prove to everyone that you can compete with anybody that's on the field, no matter where, what college they go to, and to come from a black college, it's just that much special. That, that is that bond. I've never been in the NFL. All HBCUs, we're all alike. Once we get to the league, you, you came from HBCU, there's a natural brotherhood there. Absolutely. And we all pull for each other doing that. You know, it was great pride seeing you, all the accomplishments you did in Green Bay. Even though I was a Viking, he was a Packer. <laughs> but it was always yeah. good to see you do it there. What was it like playing out there in Green Bay? Cold. Very cold. <laughs> very cold. But you know what? It, it's, it's more like a college feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the only thing in, in Green Bay is you pull up in this big this town and all of a sudden you see this big this big uh, stadium pop out of nowhere. Here's what we used to wonder. All right, now the Vikings and, and Packers were rivals. Absolutely. We're like, we got a dome. <laughs> Why yeah. are they playing outside? You gotta be in the elements, right? See, no, the they don't. Is, the right? They wasn't playing real football. Oh, oh that's the you thing. Go. You know, we was playing real Get football on. outside. <laughs> the game of football is played outside, not inside. But I, 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 I appreciate it though. And every year it was, was cold. And every year it was free agency. Y'all was always losing one or two guys because they want the lead to get out of that cold. Yeah. Then they realized, <laughs> man, I should have stayed in Green Bay. <laughs> I, got I, I got one more question as this play is continued to be reviewed. Nick, we forecast ahead to, to next weekend. All right. The Florida Classic. <laughs> no. Some of your greatest memories Absolutely. of the Florida Classic and what that rivalry means for these two schools. That rivalry is, uh, that's just like uh, Green Bay and Chicago or Minnesota, the Vikings. That's the type of rivalry it is. Um, guys going to come. We know each other very well. Calling an incomplete pass there. So take another look at it. It was a fumble ruled on the field. That call is reversed from that incomplete pass. Yeah, well, you can tell there never really clearly has it. And, you know, where they go back to a football move, wasn't able to make a football move. The defensive back out there a little too quick, knocked it away. So that allowed Bethune Cookman to keep the ball at least and punt it away. But back to what you were saying as the Wildcats are back to punt. Yeah, we know each other very well, so it's going to be a hard-fought game. But I think, you know, Wildcats can do 
do the job and get a, get a victory. But when I was here, the job was to beat fam. You know, the three years that I played here, you know, I'm undefeated. So, so that, I, means I did, did, that, that, that means a lot to me. I took it proud. You know, my father did it. They was the only team to do it. And I came along and we beat them three years in a row. So they can, you know, carry the legacy on. And the streak is currently at seven. That Absolutely. Mabu Cookman has bested Florida a and You think they're going to get to eight, Nick? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so because I, I got a bunch of uh, fr friends and family that went to um, uh, fam. So... I don't want to hear it. Not around <laughs> Thanksgiving, too. The following week is Thanksgiving. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> it's all love at the end of the day. It's a Absolutely. booming punt from Giovanni Francis. Thanks so much, Nick Collins, for taking the time to step in the booth with us. We appreciate your time and perspective. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks thank so you. much. MIAC Hall of Famer Nick Collins. Come get, on, Tim. Get, get me right. Wait a yeah, minute. I'm right. telling you. Tell him, Jay. We work hard, hard to get here. Wait a minute. I gave me his just do. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank I'm you. I'm sorry I close it out the way. I, it's all right. Thank okay. you. Thank, thank you. you. Nothing thank but you. love. I still, Nothing I but love. love. I, you, you know, you, you, we should have caught that on camera. A wildcat <laughs> and a rat. Enjoy the rest of the game. Enjoy your classic legend. I appreciate it. All right. That's good times, Jay. No, but good dude, yeah. quality, and, and represented himself as well as all HBCUs well when he was playing in the National Football League. And, you know, he's a fixture in this community. Does a lot for this community, comes back here at the games, and that's what it's all about. And glad he was able to spend a little time and you were able to meet my fellow Hall of Famer. <laughs> You put on the purple jacket at the start of the season at the MEAC Swag Challenge. And that's something that I think is really neat at the end of the day. I mean, I, I give you a hard time about a lot of things, but no one can ever take that away from you. And it's great that a conference recognizes its top players who have changed the game. And Ramadan with some tough yards and Devin James, actually that Schaffner, Back at quarterback, they've been having a, a, a little carousel, a merry-go-round at that quarterback yeah, both, position. Yeah, both teams have been doing that. They've been doing the quarterback shuffle, and that's going to happen when you get in the game where two defenses are playing at a high level. The spark has been the supplemental players for the quarterback, and for North Carolina Central, it's definitely been Isaiah Totten. I continue to find ways to get him the football. Yeah, see, it's third and three. Totten's a guy. Schaffner can run, but he can't run like Totten. Mm -hmm. And Totten has shown if there's no hole, he can create one and find one. And now they're going to have to punt this football. Fourth and one for Granville Eastman's group. And it's his first season as head coach, the interim head coach. He told his team that we have to come in with the mindset that this is like a playoff game. And if his team has learned anything so far, it's that Jimmy Robinson is a man who can hurt you with his legs, bobbles a snap, picks it up. He changes direction so well, and he's brought down near the 35-yard line. That's where the Wildcats offense will start on the other side. Get to know. Get to know Geico for homeowners insurance. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Beach, a one-point game. Last season it was in Durham, and it came down to a last-second play, an unsportsmanlike penalty. Set this up. Larry Brim to Kevon Mitchell, who picks it up in the back of the end zone after it was tipped, and that thwarted North Carolina Central's chances of repeating for a fourth straight MEAC title. These two teams compete in a dogfight every year, it seems like, evenly matched, and it's been no different here this year down in Daytona. You go back to... Oh, look at that. Rough, rough exchange, and quickly the ball handed right back over to North Carolina Central, Wilhelm Heisen. Oh, that's big. On the recovery. This time of game, when you start bringing quarterbacks in and out, you've got Dunham in the game right now. I always put this on the quarterback. Bag snap with the accuracy we talked about. But as a QB, you determine if you want to pull that ball or not. He didn't secure it.
but we've been hinting at this. The snaps have been off center much of the night. They haven't corrected that just yet, and they got another bad snap in this situation here that ended up costing them with the turnover. Like you said, Jay, so costly as now North Carolina Central with a chance to add to their lead, 7.23 to go. And Isaiah Totten continuing to bounce. You said the patient running and great vision. We saw it once again there. Yeah, and that's the call I thought they should have gone to on third down and short instead of the quarterback running the football. Give it to a guy that makes guys miss on a regular basis with the vision. Your best ball carrier. And Isaiah Totten now, Totten time right now. Keep feeding them. And the Eagles really need this because thus far this half, they've had five possessions and it's all ended with a punt. Totten straight ahead for the first down. It's working. I mean, he's literally they're giving him the ball. Read it. Find a hole wherever you think you can take it. And he's doing a great job of finding some running lanes. So this is North Carolina Central's second trip to the red zone tonight. We saw them get deep on that first drive and score a touchdown. They're one of the best when it comes to executing 20 yards and in. Totten once more kicking it to the outside. Devin James, that vocal leader at that linebacker position on the stop. And this is make or break time right now for this Bethune-Cookman defense. Hold them to a field goal attempt. Don't allow them to get this first down. And if you're defensive coordinator Yogi Jones, you dial up your best blitz in terms of what's been working. And for them, they've had success when they crowd the line of scrimmage with four defensive linemen and keep the linebackers close at home. I'm central. I'm going back to that play where I just let Isaiah Todd and pick a hole. Instead, it's Ramadan who finds the hole and the end zone. Two for two tonight in the red zone for the Eagles on that 15-yard QB run. Surprised everybody. They snuck Ramadan back into the game on the side and realized he was back in there. And you know that Todd's going to get attention. And they start to go with Totten. Great job coming to, on the seal block by number 73, Ricky Lee. Got in position and kept Kevin Thompson out of there, creating a running lane for Ramadan. They said they had to find ways to make him feel comfortable tonight. He started off strong, and then he comes through there with a huge touchdown to give a little cushion for the Eagles, uh -oh. and that one was no good. And this extra point that could come up costly, but the turnover there and a the good team to make you pay. Ramadan calls his own number to increase the Eagles' lead. If you're just tuning in, the kicking game has been a big storyline tonight, Jay. Yeah, they got to take advantage of it. This started early after a great drive by North Carolina Central. They had their uh, PAT block return for two points and kicking woes. Everybody's been hitting crossbars and what just happened another miss on the PAT So it could be an eight-point lead is now just a seven-point game Still this game is in the balance uh, for sure Jay and special teams have really helped to keep the opposing team in this one tonight And if you are North Carolina Central the one thing you do not want to do is kick it directly at number 22 in the gold jerseys and Jimmy Robinson. He trails back yeah, bring it out, Jimmy. deep into his uh, end zone. He can do everything, ladies and gentlemen. And he's still <laughs> on his feet, spins down. And you just hold your breath for one second because you know he can break it away. The Wildcats trying to even the score. David Israel looking to lead his team tonight. And you take a look at the quarterback comparison for the Wildcats. 
Six of 10 for Jabari Dunham, four of seven, both of them just over 50 yards, but that hasn't been the story, really. It's been Jimmy Robinson who's been much of the offense tonight. And Stephon Francois with the first down. So David Israel, a chance to engineer a drive to tie the score if the extra point can go through, Jay. <laughs> I think that's a big if, the way things have been going. But I do like the way Israel drives the ball downfield and really challenges the secondary. Swings out to his left, finds Kevon Mitchell, throw. cross midfield, and near first down. You know, that, that's a big time throw. What, what you saw there, not as easy as it looked. He's rolling to his left and has to pick up speed momentum to get some separation. And the faster you run, the more accuracy you lose. But look at this quick whip. Turn the shoulder, square up, throw an accurately thrown ball. That's a nice quarterback play by Israel. And what do you like about David Israel? We, we've seen Akevius Williams earlier in the season. He's out, but what does David Israel bring to the field? He's got that fast twitch. He's a fast twitch type guy. He makes a quick decision on when to keep the ball, when to run it in the run pass game, a quick release, live arm. So he's got a lot of intangibles, but, you know, he's got a lot of turnovers. You know, he's got a number of interceptions, and you can see why. He's not afraid to challenge opposing defensive secondaries. And you know, guys like Brett Favre are like that. You know, strong-arm guys typically think they can take what they want. He just has to learn how to play with a little bit more control, and he can become a really good weapon. Paul's on the field as Brandon Bailey, the banged up North Carolina Central player. Linebacker has made some, some big plays tonight, and you would hate to see him go down, given the fact that when we talked with Granville Eastman this week, he said he's the next coming of Reggie Hunter. Yeah, Reggie Hunter, who was a stud at linebacker for this Eagles. So out to Jimmy Robinson. And Jimmy Robinson makes everybody in the stadium hold their breath every time he touches the ball 18 yards yeah, on the pickup. Yeah, get him that football. And I like this call by Alan Suber. Outside, you know he's going to make the first guy miss. Nice vision, missed tackle there, runs through another one. He is that weapon. Now they line him up in the slot. They take their time and find their steady receiver in Kevon Mitchell, and he's greeted by a number of white jerseys. Jaquel Taylor, the first to get to him. When we talked with Coach Sims, he said, Kevon Mitchell is our glue guy. He is the one that keeps them together, and you see the chippiness on the field. It's starting to play out now in these crucial minutes before the end of the game, Jay. And I really want to give credit to the officials not throwing a flag because there were many times they could have. And I think whatever team can avoid the costly penalty, we have the best chance of winning this football game. Israel, four for four on this drive for 50 yards. Quickly swings it out to Isaac Washington. And Isaac Washington tripped up by Anthony Sherrill. Yeah, I still won't get that ball to Jim Robinson. You have to prove to me that you can tackle him. So you run the sweep around and you use Robinson as a blocker. Why not get him the football and let some people block for him? So Wildcats enter the red zone. Second time tonight, this one crucial. And if they keep this look right here, you're going to have Robinson at the top of your screen at the slot lined up one-on-one -on -one versus safety. Quickly out and over to Malik Jackson. And Jackson just short of the goal line. Uh, they, they should take a look at this. I mean, I thought he extended the football outward and got across the goal line. Now they saying no catch. No catch and a flag on the field. The penalty goes against Bethune Cookman. I didn't see what the call was. 
an eligible man downfield is what we're being told. They had trouble lining up the formation. You see the, the five guys on the line of scrimmage and then the six. Are they saying ineligible downfield in terms of alignment? I thought it was illegal formation was covered, but that's a tough call in that situation. A tough call for Bethune Cookman. They'll try to do it again. Israel had Malik Jackson. Instead, he goes to the right side and the sure handed Kevon Mitchell. So a 16 yard game. Take a look at this play. And I'm just curious how far down. Obviously, you see where it is. That's four yard, five. That's, that's a tough call, but give credit to Bethune Cookman. They were able to overcome. That tight call. The Wildcats have kept it in the air all drive long. And that pass incomplete to Robinson. First incompletion on this drive. It's so interesting, Jay, because we said it at the beginning of the broadcast and we remind you again that these two teams always play each other Tough. tight. And I think they're some of the more evenly matched teams in, in the conference. Bethune has a speed. Central's always had that power to deal with that a little bit and negate it. And they've had some fantastic games during the years, and this is shaping up to be another one of those. Razzle-dazzle. They oh, go with no. Malik Jackson. Oh, wow. And oh, boy, what a stop. By Devontae Reynolds throwing up the hooks, leads the team in tackles, and that one was huge. Hey, the impact player making an impact. They try to get a little, try to get a little fancy, fake the sweep, come back around with the reverse, and good job of sniffing it out by Devontae Reynolds making the open field tackle for a loss, and that could be the one that secures this victory for North Carolina Central. A 12-yard loss for the Wildcats on that play. Devontae Reynolds was there. We talked about some of the close finishes. Two of the last three years, it's come down to the wire. You go back to Durham in 2015. It was the Eagles who led to this block. Game-winning field goal. Oh, it goes bad little technical it, difficulty there and then last year of course the Hail Mary yeah and it was a game that they were definitely gonna win but they missed the field goal and so it was a great comeback competitive game and you just have the feeling that these two teams when they fight it goes on to the wire and then they also have the Hail Mary from last season so who's gonna see that was a big play though and, and, a little risky call in that situation. They must have seen something schematically they planned for all week to go with that reverse call in that situation. But the offense had been moving down the field a little bit. They had some momentum. And that's the thing. When I call those risky plays, they're high risk, high reward. But the risk part you can't underestimate. And the Wildcats have had a tough go of it on third down. Now third and goal. David Israel trying to create some extra time rolling oh, out. Oh, wow. Finds a man in the back of the end zone for the score. Kevon Mitchell. Well, he was the one that hurt the Eagles last season. And now his team with an opportunity to tie the ball game on this PAT. Just buying time, realizing what's at stake. I can't get sacked, make some guys miss, and finds a wide open Kevon Mitchell, who we said the senior may have a big senior day here tonight, comes up with the crucial catch to pull the Wildcats within one. And, and now, so now, a timeout is taken on the field. The Wildcats will spend the time out, and we already told you that the kicking game, special teams, been a little off tonight. Yeah, I mean, neither team has done very well. North Carolina Central, after their opening touchdown, had a PAT blocked. 
And then Bethune Cookman had a field goal blocked as well as another PAT. So they've been kick and rolls by both teams. And I think that last one was big. When he missed it, we said that could be big because you put Bethune Cookman only down by seven instead of putting them down by eight, forcing them to go for a two point conversion. Now Hernandez can tie it up if he can convert on this extra point. Again, a senior first team on the ag selection a season ago. And how big is this point after attempt? Snap good, hold down. And it's good! Tie ball game! And he's feeling himself right now, Jay. <laughs> a kicker with an attitude. Yeah. What else is next? I love it. He's got some moxie for sure. That's how you make a name for yourself. Coming back in the crucial moment. Yeah, look at him. He's staring the guy down all over him. <laughs> you said. He's got a lot of guts. 5 4, 209. <laughs> Don't mess with the down south, homie. And I remember coming in, everybody asked. Well, who do you think is going to win this game? And I said, this game's a toss-up. I really don't know who's going to win it, and it seems to have played out that way so far. Uh-oh, the White Hats. I'll tell you, when those White Hats get to moving, start shaking the bleachers in the stands, and got ourselves a tie ball game. Well, we told you at the start of the broadcast that both of these teams had an outside chance of perhaps clinching a share or getting a share of that MEAC title. They would have to win out and have some things play out in their favor. And this one is coming down to the wire as Demario Evans signals for the fair catch. Our Week 10 Monday Night Football matchup has Odell Beckham Jr., Saquon Barkley, and the Giants at San Fran to take on the 49ers. Nick Mullins gets another start after his incredible performance last week against the Raiders. 8-15 Eastern, 5-15 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. You can watch it anyway. And remember, our coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. So two timeouts remaining for North Carolina Central. 53 seconds remaining on the clock and they start this drive at the 25 yard line nope. and before at the 20 yard they line. snap it they'll go back five yards so now they have to drive 80 yards or will they rely on Jonathan DeLuca yeah you just try to get in field goal range so you know what that would be and I always say the most important play of a two-minute drive offense is the first play. Get it going, get some rhythm, get some tempo. Don't start off throwing incompletions because you don't get it going right. We're quickly out to Totten. He's been the playmaker all night long. Marquise Hendricks on the stop. What do you call here on second down? I try and, I try and pick up as much as I can to determine whether or not I'm going to let the clock run out. But you also have to be sensitive to the fact that Bethune-Cookman does have a timeout left. And if they get a stop, they're going to call timeout. So the Eagles taking their time. And Ramadan going for it down the sideline. It was batted up. And the pass incomplete. Henry Miller, the pit transfer, in on the coverage. So now no need to take a timeout here. And they've tried to go for the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside. Don't drift a little bit. If he tries to fight to come back for that football, you force the official to throw a flag. That's not the case. And now I'm thinking if I'm Bethune Cookman, you can get a quick stop and a timeout and give Jimmy Robinson an opportunity to return the kick. Third and 15. Eagles. Hand it off, and they stay safe. 
and keep it on the ground. So just like you said, Jay, now Bethune-Cookman spins their final time out. Yep. And I tell Jimmy Robinson, you return this kick. <laughs> you don't want it to hit the ground. You want him, you don't want him to fair catch if you have to. Well, back in 2015, this one was a close one. This would be the game winner from 18 yards. Instead, it's blocked, and Bethune Cookman comes out victorious. Then last year, we stay in Durham. Unsportsmanlike penalty. That sets up this play, Jay. The Hail Mary McLeod Bethune, as they call it down here. The season on the line for North Carolina Central. They knocked the ball down. They're playing AT the next week for a right to go to Celebration Bowl that ended their conference winning streak and just devastated them. And once again, it's another tight football game between these two equally matched ball clubs. Well, Kevon Mitchell is set to return this for Bethune Cookman. A little squib kick out. Mitchell picks it up from the 40 yard line. Mitchell keeps going, runs behind his blockers across midfield. And that is the end of regulation tied at 22 all and both of these teams going to an overtime period for the first time this season and you think they're ready to play this extra time jay just take a look right there <laughs> they've been chippy all night and 60 minutes wasn't enough so they got to add some more time on the clock and you knew it would be a close game and this is what you want to see both teams we said it earlier in the open that Hey, whoever loses this game, their season comes down to just one game playing the spoiler role against their rival. And who's going to be still left standing? I love the drama that ensues when these two teams play, and that's held true now the last four years. I will show you, I, I saw a lot of fight from Bethune Cookman. And I thought they got outplayed in the first half. They used the big plays to stay in this ball game. And in fact, they were able to force overtime. Credit to Coach Sims ball squad. Just a reminder to our viewers, the overtime rules, a coin toss for the choice of offense, defense, or end of field. No game clock here, and each team gets one possession from the opponent's 25-yard line let, let me until a winner something. is decided. Let, let me highlight something here, which is unique. Go ahead. I'm looking at this right here, the end of the field. With this band right here, they just seem to play a little bit better going in this direction. So <laughs> if you're North Carolina Central, you want to go away from Bethune Cookman's band, if you've got any say so about it. They're 300 plus in a strong machine going. But on the other side, you've got the sound machine from North Carolina Central. They may not be big in numbers, but they came here to represent. And they did. They gave their team a spark that they needed early on. But right now, this is Bethune Cookman, number one band in the country, I'd say. They defended their home turf pretty well here tonight in the battle of the bands. We've had a rocking good time from Daytona Stadium. Four quarters wasn't enough. If you had to, who would you say had the most momentum? at the end of that game. They got no Bethune because yeah. they were able to tie it up. Central just had to make a defensive stop. They couldn't. Bethune overcame, uh, you know, risky play calls and scored. Yeah, I think what was interesting is that Bethune continued to use big plays. Like yep. The big momentum shift plays to keep them in this ball game. Steady drives we saw from North Carolina Central. Let's take a listen in to this point point toss. Okay, you guys understand? Yes, sir. You understand? All right. Okay. 
cooking, you know what I'm saying? Tails, cooking over there. I heard tails, I heard tails. Purple is tails, that side's head. Tails it is. Oh, we got our hands. That's a head. That's a head. Come on. That's a head. Come on, defense first. You got stuck. Come on, defense first. You want defense first? You want defense first? It got stuck. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> I just love listening in. Thank you so much to our crew for providing that audio. Well, if that's not enough to get you pumped up, uh, I don't know what will because they are ready. This PAT tied it up. OT on the other side. Jim has had a rough life. His third wife ran off with his second wife. His daughter's first words were, this isn't working, Jim. Tornadoes chase him. During a near-death experience, someone else's life flashed before his eyes. But Jim feels like a champion because he's eating tasty, protein-powered, wonderful pistachios. And when you feel better about your snacks, you feel better about yourself. I just got my ancestry DNA results, 74% Italian. And I found out that I'm from the big toe of that sexy Italian boot. So this holiday season, it's ancestry DNA per tutti. Order your kit now at ancestry.com. So Bethune Cookman deferred. deferred and they will play defense first. Yep, and they get to choose the side of the field they play mm -hmm. in, and you know what they did. Oh, yeah. They want to play in front of that marching Wildcat band. Both teams sitting at an even 500 overall on the season. And they need to hurry up and get to the line mm -hmm. of scrimmage. You've got the play clock running already because they took too long over on the sideline. Don't start off overtime burning a timeout or a delay a game. Less than 10 seconds on the clock. You only get one timeout per overtime period. And Ramadan was stuck by Vernon Walker. That's that play we saw Ramadan score the touchdown on earlier, which put the Eagles at 22 points. They missed the PAT to go to 23 and allow Bethune Cookman opportunity to tie it up. I'm still getting the ball to Isaiah Totten. He's in the backfield. They hand it off. Takes his time. The yak and Darius Clark. There on was the stop. nothing there. Mm -hmm. And yet he creates something out of nothing. I mean, great running. I mean, he ran through arm tackles and just look at the vision. There's nothing there. They're clogging up the middle and running backs run the color. All he sees is yellow jerseys everywhere, but he's able to find a small crease, keep the legs going and pick up good yardage. Now third and two. Totten once again, this time Whoa. he's pushed backward. Whoa. Jerome Howard, he ran into a big wall there. Devin James in on the stop. Everybody's pumped up on that Wildcat defense. Oh, fourth and one. Do you go for it here? The kicking has been shaky. I would not be upset if you saw Coach Eastman elect to go for it here on fourth and one. You're on the road. It's a conference game. And that's what they do. They're going for it here. Look to the sideline for the stop play. Totten. Make him stop Totten. Five seconds on the play clock. And Totten is the man. <laughs> he's been your workhorse all night long as he's closing in on 200 yards, Jay. If you're going to go out, if he can stop Totten twice, okay. Then you deserve to keep us off the field but that's a good play call by tc taylor get the ball to your best football player and just let him find a hole he's looking makes a cut gets low and picks up the first down two safeties high I mean you can run the football you should be able to run the ball i'm surprised they're not coming up and crowd the line of scrimmage against the run well, they hand it to Totten, who's responsible for all three touchdowns tonight for North Carolina Central. See, what you're looking for, when they break the huddle, what I'm looking for as I break the huddle, I'm looking where the safeties. And you see the two safeties, they're a little bit high. While I look at the sideline, these are your safeties. 
there. Those two guys are going to tell you what they're doing, what type of coverage they're playing. You get them high with a slot guy over them, he's probably blitzing to come in to stop the run. Who faked the handoff and Ramadan trying to get to the outside and Elliot Miller trips him up. And Miller's down. Miller, the senior out of Miami. Stretching out. Yeah, so. this may have just caught a cramp. It was a muggy day out there today. Game time temperature probably close to 90. And you see Miller just sticking that head in there, sacrificing his body, tackling below the waist. I mean, his job, he can't let that quarterback get outside of him. Takes the legs from underneath Ramadan. Pretty good run by Ramadan, but Miller with a probably a first down saving tackle. He's up. So now that both of the teams on their sidelines, what are you saying in the huddle if you're Bethune, Cookman, and North Carolina Central? Well, one, you tell everybody, don't jump off sides. You know, Bethune, Cookman, don't give them a cheap first down to help them get there. Make them earn everything that they get. Play discipline. You know Todd's going to get the ball, but follow your keys. This is when you have to trust your keys. Follow what you're supposed to do. If you're responsible for outside, you've got outside. If you've got the A-gap, get to the A-gap. But you have to play disciplined football against a team that's running the ball pretty effectively. We'll see what the Eagles dial up here. Third and four. Well, they should run the ball twice with Totten. Hopefully once he gets you the first down. But if he gets you two or three, you're going to give him the ball again on fourth down. Instead, Ramadan rolling out. He's going for the sticks, and he's near the first down marker. Do you like that call? No. Should have given the ball to Totten. There was a crease there, but here's why offensive coordinators love mobile quarterbacks. Because when you make a bad call, they can help cover you up. And that was a bad call. They had it covered, and Ramadan was able to run and almost pick up the first down. It drives defenses crazy mobile quarterbacks but as an OC you like having one. So what do you think of this decision here? They already converted a fourth down. Now they bring on the kicking unit. Yeah, well they know this is a sure three points earlier. <laughs> Probably wouldn't have made it. I still think I would have run the ball twice with Todd and saying stop my best player. Adam Lippy. And he tried to catch the guys offside. Perhaps maybe Bethune Cookman wasn't lined up. There's a flag on the field. Or maybe a delay of game. Okay. Wow, delay of game? Five to the snap. Delay of game. Kicking team. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Woo! That hurts. With two, one. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, did they get the snap off? That uh, was close. It, it was bang, bang, I would say. Mm. So Lippy now on for a 27 yard attempt. He gets this one up and through the uprights. Look at that. You see him touching. He got <laughs> ice in these veins, man. Ice in these veins. You got to love like kickers. this little standoff with the kickers because they got a lot of juice and attitude, and we've seen it here tonight. Kickers are always a quirky bunch, <laughs> from the field goal kickers to the punter. But I like that. You go there, they back you up five yards, a lot of pressure. You know if you miss it, you're probably going to lose. And after he makes it, hey, ice in these veins, looking at the other side. <laughs> <laughs> now, one could say either it was good play by the other team or where was that a little bit earlier if you will because this game could have been over that's true you missed that you extra point extra points but a good one has to just put it behind you. so yeah. give them credit yeah and the both these kickers put their misses behind them mm -hmm. and when the game was clutch they came up with some pretty good kicks we know what worked well for central all game the rushing attack with top what does Bethune Cookman come out with here. Jimmy Robinson in the backfield. I like that combination of Israel and Robinson in there. Both of them dual threats in the backfield. Robinson initially 
hit in the backfield, and then he's brought down by Devontae Reynolds. We Ooh. saw him come up <laughs> with a big tackle for a loss earlier. Yeah, the, the MEAC preseason defensive player of the year is probably one of the few guys on this field that can make an open field tackle like that against Jimmy Ro Reynolds Robinson. Sorry, a guy that can make you miss from every angle. I'll look for them to try and bring some pressure. And backs him up three yards. Once again, the RPO and David Israel. He almost broke one. He got close. Marcus Martin tripped him up. Risky here. Calls his own number and decides to cut against the grain. Makes him miss there. Then sees all the white jerseys and finds a lane. That's just poor tackling. They were in the right place to make a stop. But the athleticism of David Israel is too much. Would not be surprised mm -hmm. if you saw Bethune Cookman take a shot up top, going to the end zone. This situation, mm -hmm. use Robinson as a decoy and try and get it to one of those wide receivers. Rolls out to his right. And just a drop from Stephon yeah. Francois. So, and nothing says that you, you, you pass the ball in that situation. Nothing says it, but you just have to know your opponent and what they do. And they like to hit home runs. They've been living by the big play all night. In that case there, Francois just not able to hold on. And now, who's got more ice in their veins for the kick? Uriel Hernandez. The leading scorer from last season. Steps back. And now eyes the 34-yard attempt. And Whoa. is this is this possible that Whoa. this is a delay of game this time for Bethune? Jay? Wow. <laughs> oh. oh my! <laughs> Just miscues on both and, and, sides. But you know what's curious? Central was running the call timeout, but this is clearly a delay of game there. But Central was running the call timeout to try to ice the kicker. Hernandez long for the season was 46 yards. This one, a 39-yard attempt to push it to a second overtime. Before that happens, a timeout here. Well, Sports Center tonight after Wake Forest, North Carolina State on ESPN with Fuchi and Zubin. James Harden and the Rockets go for 4-0 on their five-game road trip there in OKC tonight. Plus, post-game reactions and analysis from Panthers, Steelers, and Trevor Maddich breaks down Clemson freshman QB, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor on Trevor. Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Now, let's go back to... Uriel Hernandez earlier in the night, Jay. Yeah, they've all been the low trajectory. Has had trouble getting the ball airborne tonight. So the key on this attempt is going to be how high does he get it? That's the key I'm looking for. He can put it through the uprights, but I'm looking for the trajectory coming off his foot. Here we go again. Snap. Oh, good. Bethune-Cookman says, and look at we're him. not done yet. And look, the official says, wait a minute. All right, let's go back to the sideline. He stared him down. <laughs> he stared down the other sideline. And once the trajectory is up, we know he can put it through the uprights. But both kickers have a little bit of redemption. you see here, gets his ball up, finds a lane, and hits it by the left side of the upright. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I love the reacts. <laughs> oh, man. I told you that dude is 5'4". Yeah. He's big dude now. Yeah. He's a thick 5'4", but kicker with an attitude. Oh. Uh, the kicking competition has been fun to watch <laughs> all night, but especially in this overtime period. And the bands aren't tired. No. 
They said we can do this all night long. As we head to a second overtime. Look, I feel like some memes or gifts are going to come out of this somehow, some way. All right, so Bethune Cookman starting the second overtime. Tries to gun it in across the middle, and they target the tight end, Teron Mallard, and that's a 14 yard gain. Protect the football. He's having a sense that Bethune's going to be a little bit more aggressive this time with the football, and they've got it. You see him just thread it in here to this window on the slant route. But protect the football if you're Bethune Cookman and quarterback David Israel. Now, Jay, if you talk about momentum, it definitely feels like Bethune Cookman has it. And Israel with the run, seven yards picked up there. Jerome Foster with the tackle. They gashed him. North Carolina Central went with a run blitz, brought Devontae Reynolds from his linebacker position. But if you don't get to the quarterback when you blitz him, once he gets by that initial line of scrimmage, he's going to hurt you. And a nice decision by Israel. I bring the rumblets again. We'll see if they target Jimmy Robinson on this play. He's in the backfield. And they hand off to Robinson up ahead. So Robinson, who is wild the crowd tonight. Brings them a little bit closer. Third and one. Oh, what a play. Oh, and they're right there, ready for Robinson. King Kiaku, the first time we've called his name tonight. The veteran makes a big stop. Oh, oh this that run blitz they've gotten. He shot the gap, timed up the snap perfectly, and there was nothing that Jimmy Robinson can do. Take a look at Kiaku right there, middle of your screen, 49. Lowers the shoulder pad level, makes the tackle for a loss. Huge play for North Carolina Central defense. But they've got Uriel Hernandez ready to come back on the field. The kicker now. This one, a chip shot essentially from 21 yards. And it's through. So now Bethune takes the lead. Look, he's looking. He can look for somebody to talk to. <laughs> the dude's like, I'm not, even, I'm not even saying anything to you, man. And he's still just talking. He wants someone to engage him. <laughs> I just keep saying, kickers are always a little quirky. But I love it because it, he also kind of serves as a fire starter for your team. We saw David Israel, the quarterback, come in after being really benched in that first half for the most part and be a spark plug. Now Hernandez is providing a lift for the Wildcats. Yeah, I mean, it looks good on TV, but if you're a player, you're saying, man, just do your job, man. <laughs> just do your job. I got to go out here and go against these 300-pound guys. And you get to kick a ball, man. Just do your job. Now it's answer time, and, and the tough part about Central, the predicament they're in right now, they've been pretty one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. Their offense has been all Isaiah Totten, mm -hmm. so Bethune-Cookman is now putting seven people close to the line of scrimmage to bottle up Totten. They have they, them they in the them. backfield, and there's Vernon Walker, the junior out of Dr. The, Phillips in Orlando. The, the, see, this is what we're talking about. They baited them into it. They gave him a seven-man box. But watch him sneak Walker all the way down to the line of scrimmage to really make it really tight on Isaiah Todd. He comes down. He sneaks there to make the tackle. That's just one too many guys for you to block. A four-yard loss. Compliments of that. Walker tackle in the backfield. Ramadan holding on to it, trying to get to the outside and not able to escape Hendricks. So a big third down coming up for North Carolina Central. And Central's without their go-to guy for this season. We haven't seen Swoosh Martin since he went out in the first half. So now you have to think and Deshaun Stevens, number six, the transfer from North Carolina State. He'd be the number one top priority I'd be looking for. 
Ramadan drops back, surveys the field. And it's incomplete. So it comes down to this play. And Bethune Cookman, when trailing at the half, has not won a game this season. They're perhaps one play away from it right here. And can you believe it, Jay? They've got the kicking unit on. I don't believe it. This is a 45-yard attempt for Anthony Jonathan DeLuca. And this one is blocked. But a oh. timeout was called before the ball was snapped by Bethune Cookman. Oh, my. Bethune Cookman got exactly what they wanted. And yet, they called a timeout before it, the kick. Uh, in Coach Sims' defense, it's the right thing to do. You call the timeout in that situation to ice them. But yeah, they got great penetration. I thought the holder might have been a little bit close, but the snap was so far back. And the hole was so far back. Jay, 0 for 1 from 40 to 49 yards this season. This, a 45-yard attempt, and flags come flying out. Illegal substitution. <laughs> well, that helps North Carolina Central just a little, yes, brings them up. Does. And you can't have that. Those are those things we talk about with penalties just showing up. Guys not doing their job. The true freshman, Jonathan DeLuca. It's up. It's no good. Game over. Bethune Cookman pulls it up in double OT. forward before the ball is snapped and DeLuca is the timing was off yeah that ball was tipped but a very low trajectory but what a football game these two teams is what they do keep them on the schedule every year I don't care what the records are these two teams deserve to go at it on national TV every year it has come down to the wire three of the last four seasons. Each time, Bethune Cookman coming out victorious. We told you it was going to be a last second play. It was here, Jay. Wow. What a game, and I'll pay to watch them play every year if it's always going to come down to the wire like this. Look out, Rattlers. Your, the Wildcats got a victory with some momentum going into the Florida Classic next weekend. A huge one coming up, and you can catch that on our ESPN Networks. It's been so much fun from, fun from Daytona Beach for Jay Walker, our entire crew of Tiffany Green saying, Holla back! <laughs>